Ain't Got It Yet podcast, episode 45. Man, I always say I'm excited about my interviews, but this one's a little different, man. This one's, uh, Mitch, I gotta be honest, bro. This is a dream come true interview for me, man. When I started, when I started my broadcast career, I, um, I had three people that I wanted to interview from San Diego. It was Norman Powell, Paul Rudy, and yourself. And I got Norman Powell and I got Paul Rudy already. So now that I got you here. You had to say the best for last, Exactly, huh? exactly. Yeah. So I, I appreciate shout you joining me on the show, man. Shout out, shout out to uh, Paul Rudy and, um, and uh, the, uh, Norman Powell. Love night, homie. Straight up Lincoln Absolutely. High School. Norman Absolutely. Powell, salute. Got, got Lincoln, I'm sorry, Lincoln High School, but San Diego, legendary San Diego, the king of San Diego as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Mitchy Slick on the I Ain't, ain't Got It Yet podcast. I ain't never said that If you notice, I ain't never said that. But it's the truth, let, though. Uh, Hey, hey, don't get mad, niggas. I didn't say it. But it's the truth, though. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's people that have, you know, everyone's career and everyone's path is different. So it's people that have, you know, you've done things that others haven't done. Others have done things that you haven't done. But as far as, like, recognition, when you think of the city, when you think music, when you think just anything dope and legendary from the town, your name is... If not the first, one of the first ones that come up. So I think it's only right, bro, to call you the king of this town. Much love, homie. Salute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, thank I'll you. I'll take it. I'll take it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, thank you for joining me, man. I, at all my interviews, I usually like to, uh, you know, get my guests their, their whole story, everything they, you know what I'm saying, that they've been doing. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's just that much better having you here, you know what I'm saying, to, to get all your story, man. So you. Okay. I got some. I got some. Got some stories for you. We go get into them for sure. We go get into them. So, uh, born and raised right here in San Diego. Uh, like your, now, your family, your parents are from Texas, if I'm not mistaken. I was the first child in my family. My grandfathers moved to San Diego together. Mm -hmm. They they was best friends since teenagers. You know, my oh, that's grandfathers. Dope. That's dope. And they moved to San Diego together. Mm -hmm. So my mom and my my pops kind of grew up like brother and sister. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, they moved out here, and um, I think it was like probably like. In the, in the 70s, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, but every my family from West Texas, homie, pops, mm -hmm. grandfathers, grandmothers, they all from West Texas, Lubbock, Texas. Shout out to uh, Estacado High School and uh, all of West Texas. Texas Tech, that's what Texas Tech is. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you ever go back? How often do you go back? I, I, ain't, I don't go back a lot, but I went back to a couple family reunions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I plan on going back soon, but shout out to all the homies out there that I was on. Um, that I was out there in, in Texas with, now, you know what I mean? As, as a kid growing up, whenever you would go back, were you like like much different from your family, being the only one, the only kid that's from here? I actually went to um, high school out there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. But we could tell, it, it, yeah, right, we get whatever to order it. you want to go, okay, you know what I'm saying? But bet, bet. Yeah, different, but you, that, that's a good part of the story. I'll tell you about it as we get to right Okay, here. bet, for sure, yeah, for that. sure. So you, you get to San Diego, um, you grew up in San Diego in a real, in probably the most like active time, one of the most active times that San Diego's the had. Most the active most time. active time that San Diego's had. You anybody anywhere, the crack era was the most active time for anybody anywhere, honey. Good point. Them 80s, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 86, 87, 88, 89, I was that real influential age at that time. Mm -hmm. 10, 11, 12, you know, th th then was the time, so. I was I was sucking in all those influences, you know what I'm saying, during that time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I say the most active time with with that because you got to understand like I mean, I'm an old nigga, but I ain't that old. Mm -hmm. But imagine a time when it wasn't no cell phones. Mm -hmm. See, I got to see that. Imagine being in class and it wasn't no computers at school. Like I got to see my age, we got to see all that transition. Mm -hmm. No cell phones, no. Pa Imagine you get at a girl, you meet her, and the only way you gonna talk to her is if you be at home waiting for the phone to ring. Can you imagine how much pussy you would have never got, nigga, if you had to be at home hoping that the girl that you actually <laughs> got dressed went to the mall, yeah. talked. It was twenty niggas lined up. Uh -huh. She talked to you, got lucky and got the phone number, uh -huh. or gave her your phone number. And the only way you was ever going to hook up with her is if you just happened to be at home when she happened to call and your mama wasn't on the phone when she called. <laughs> right, right, right. You feel me? Uh -huh. See, that era, that time was very, it was different, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What, how was it, um, how were you able to, I mean, obviously you were involved in the streets at that time or mm -hmm. got involved in the streets at that time, but what was it, what was it like for you navigating those times and how did you navigate those times? It was crazy because I'm, I'm, I'm the only child, homie. I don't, I don't, I mean, I got, I got, Stepsister, stepsister, and, and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I love her. Shout out to my sister Brandy. But um, I was the only child, homie. Mm -hmm. 
So it was it was crazy for me, and I trip a lot of times figuring how I even did that, knowing how the politics and the shit that was going on mm-hmm. for me in my neighborhood at that time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was rough, homie, and I mean rough. Being the only child, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. How, how much? And I got I have a similar question in a little bit. But how how much differently do you think your experience would have been had you had an older? I was about to say brother, but just an older sibling or even a younger sibling. Well, it's different, homie. When 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 the kids on the block or kids at school know that you ain't got nobody that's gonna mm-hmm. come up here and get down for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You beat a nigga up, and y'all might be the same age, but he can go get his big brother. Mm-hmm. And this big brother ain't worried about what your big brother going to do because you ain't got one. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. So you, you had to kind of figure out a few things. You had to either learn how to get around the situation or get with the program. Mm-hmm. And I kind of had to get with the program. I mean, I grew up a block away from Lincoln Park. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I walked through Bay Vista to get to school, to get to Knox every day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And both my grandparents, when they moved to San Diego, they lived places. But by the time I was born, um, my pops and them, I think they lived in the coast before I was born. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Off of L. Mm-hmm. And then, um, shit, by the time I was born, one of my grandparents stayed on one side of Euclid and Logan, and my other set of my grandparents lived on the other side of Euclid and Logan. Wow. And that kind of, you know, it's, it's a certain group of homies on this side and group of homies on this side. And I grew up on both sides, so I'm both sides of the homies. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, so uh it was wild, homie. It, you know, being um, a kid in that in that area at that time, it was a, it was it was a straight proving ground. They called the shit bullying. Now it wasn't even no such thing as bullying when we was little. It was just mm-hmm. growing up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The bigger kids beat on you, and then you do the same to the little niggas under you. You feel For sure. me? Uh-huh. And so you just had to get with it. Wasn't no telling no mama when a nigga kicked you and your ass up at the mm-hmm. up at the school. You had to get down. Mm-hmm. And and and. Either you was going to get with the homies or you, you, you didn't. And that's kind of how it was for me. I had to find my way. Um, um, I always tell this story. A few people that heard this story. But I remember because um, I, I used to live over there by Valencia Park in the, in the Valencia Views. And there's so many Southeast legends that grew up over there, homie, like older cats. Like I think um, from all different hoods at the time, you know, because for the youngsters that don't know, Shit, everything in between, basically Martin Luther, well, let's say 61st and Valencia Park Way for two, three blocks both ways, that was just an open field. Mm-hmm. Oh, and wow. when they start building them houses over there, the Valencia Views, it was a lot of legendary homies that lived over there, man. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, the homie, big homie, I and I, Ivan Catlin, and, and um, shit, I mean, Redhead Rob, and 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 Mike Ivory and uh, I think uh, Black Dave. It was a lot of legendary cats over there mm-hmm. that grew up in that area. But it was a melting pot, and I was just a young kid over there getting it from all angles. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was it was. I, I moved I, when I was seven. I moved to further into the to the turf right up right down the street from Lincoln Park on Mount Main Street. And, um, you know, I remember one day I was outside playing on the playground at Knox Elementary. And one of the older homies pulled me to the side, big homie Kenny Demon, this young, and sat me down at lunch after the bell had rang, I mean, mm-hmm. after recess. And he told me, he was like, you know what, little homie? He was like, little homie, you hard and all right. But you got to tell your mama to quit dressing you like that, homie. <laughs> Mons, you know, shit. Mons and it was, you know, getting you fly. Food. I was fresh. Uh-huh. Argyled up, you know what I'm saying? Penny loafers, Nordstrom up and shit. Uh-huh. I'm over here with the Grimies, you know what I'm saying? They was like, homie, you whore, you a little homie, but you got to tell your mama to quit dressing you like that. Mm-hmm. And I did, homie, you know what I'm saying? I remember being in the, the third and fourth grade, you know, Crunchy Levi's, starched up, mm-hmm. Chuck Taylors, Pendleton on, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Flagging all the shit. Yeah. Young, just. Yeah. And his pictures on my Instagram showing me being very young, not even knowing, homie. I mean, you don't know what you're doing when you're that young. Mm-hmm. Tossing up the set at eight, nine, and ten. Mm-hmm. You don't really know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. At that time, I was just doing what the rest of the kids was doing and what I felt I had to do to make your home safe every day. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I mean, not like no niggas was bullying me or pressuring me because I was with the shit. But this is what we doing over here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, what was that? So you, you just said to mom, like, I need, I need some new gear. Like, what did you, what did you say to moms? 
I don't remember all that, but I remember I shit you. like this. I'll be like, hey, mom, can I take this handkerchief to school so I could pat my afro down? Mm-hmm. You know, you put the you used to put it to make it smooth and shit. Uh-huh. And, and that's how I used to be able to take my rag to school. Uh, I see. And me and Ice B, everybody know Ice B, me and Ice B before school, eight, eight, you know, seven in the morning, 19 years old, we ironing our money up and everything, ironing our flags and all that before we go to school. And mm-hmm. that's what it was. And niggas didn't even really know they was being bad. They was just doing what, 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 what was going on. You said I was at like eight, nine years old. Nine, eight, nine, ten, yeah, all that. So you made your name pretty early then? Um, yeah, I used to be known in football first. Okay. It was breaking. Okay. Break dancing and shit as kids. Okay, I didn't know that. I knew about the Everybody, football. Everybody, see, y'all don't know. Uh-huh. Break dancing was some gangster shit. Well, we I knew living. that. I didn't know Mitchie Slick was was big. Everybody, I got you. That makes everybody. sense. That makes sense. That no, makes sense. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, you had a jury, nigga. Everybody had a jury crew. I everybody. See. I see. Bre- uh, uh-huh. Was a breaker. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. no niggas. It was straight full. The the most gang banging niggas was break dancers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, straight up. I'm Shout out to Black Mikey and. And, and it was a gang of homies. Black Mikey was one of the coldest niggas. Okay. Straight up. Mm-hmm. I knew Black Mikey since I was a little nigga. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's who got me to rapping and shit when I was little. Shit. And so you, you mentioned it was dancing. So you made a name like, I'm saying, you say everybody was breaking, but you kind of made a name as a break dancer, though? Uh, you know, but yeah, but, but not, not, that wasn't my main thing. My main shit came from football. Okay. So we was breaking niggas new from that, and then football came. You feel me? Shit. And um, shit, man, that's why I really started being known there from football. I played for Valencia Park all as a youngster and shit, and I grew up on a super heavy football street, you know what I'm saying? All the legendary coaches, Coach Moore, Coach Sharp, Coach Fears, these are names that everybody, you know, know. And at Link, Valencia Park, heyday, these niggas all, like my uncles, lived on my street. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So football was big. I mean, it's still big in San Diego, but that's all we did as youngsters. So, you know, I played quarterback for a lot of um, for a lot of legendary niggas that went on to the pros and did shit. I was their quarterbacks and shit like that back when we was little. Mm-hmm. But the streets kind of took you know, took me under. I mean, nigga never really grew to be no NFL size nigga or nothing like that. But the streets really took over. Huh? By the time niggas got like. High school, like in high school. Got you. So you didn't get to play any high school football? I played. I played at Lincoln. Okay. And I played. A, I played um, a year at Chula Vista too. Mom sent me to Texas. Like I was gonna get to the story. Mom sent me to Texas. I think I was in the tenth grade. Mm-hmm. And um, I told her I couldn't take it out there no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, shit, man. After that, she said you can go back to Dago, but you can't go back to Lincoln. I said, oh, fuck it, I'm going to Chula Vista. And I, I, I didn't look at no schools. I just knew Chula Vista was a cool area for me to go to and not get into no shit. Mm-hmm. And I went there and they recruited me and gave me all the bullshit spill I didn't know. And um, I like to say, uh, y'all got to watch out for them coaches' parents because they got coaches like Coach Donovan that coached at Chula Vista. And they not looking out for your kids' well-being and they'll tell your kids all kind of shit to get you to come there and don't really have their best interests at, at hand. Mm. Had me come out there and told me it wasn't no other running backs out there and I got a shot at starting and all that. And I went to hell week and did all the shit, homie. And then by the time, um, it was like about a week before the season start. And then here comes some new little darling. He ain't new, he been out there. Mm-hmm. And um, Nev, Nev Richardson, shout out to the homie Nev, yeah. Um, yeah. Nigga had been playing varsity for the last three years already and just uh, had me out there uh, working the defense side and shit. Nigga like, nigga, you fucked my whole yeah. career off. You know found somewhere else to go. Yeah, I could have went anywhere. Mm-hmm. But you, nigga, you had a whole bunch of other niggas yeah. that playing running back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I just want y'all to know, all you parents, watch out for them coaches like Coach Donovan. That's real. That's real. Yeah, that. But anyways, yeah, it, it was the story, homie. I went to Texas, homie. And um, mm-hmm. shit. I was fucking up in Dago and shit, mm-hmm. and mom sent me off to Texas to go to school out there, and I stayed with my, with my um, basically like my aunt, that's my mom's cousin, Daphne, rest in peace, I love the shit out of her, and um, it's a trip because um, I had got into something, man, me and, um, me, and uh, me and the homie from Skyline, Papa, homie, had one of our real gladiator Royal Rumbles, you know, I'm, I'm saying names and everything, much respect to that nigga Papa from, uh, from Eastside, homie. That was a real nigga, man. And me and that nigga got into it. 
And mom sent me straight. I nigga, that by the time that was on Saturday, Monday, nigga, I was in Texas already. Wow, some Fresh Prince type. She huh? Sent me to. She was like, nigga, you're out of here. Wow. You're out of here, homie. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you ain't finna be in the middle of all this bullshit. Mm -hmm. And um, so she fly me out there. My aunt come pick me up from the airport. I get off the um, get off the plane, hop in the car. We drive to the neighborhood where she stayed. My mom and them grew up. On the way in, on the way into the house, homie, she trying to get me away from the gang banging shit. On the way in, I look at the park, nigga, it's 30 Crips up at the park having initiations away from, a, a block away from the house where I'm finna be staying. Damn. In Lubbock, Texas. Wow. What, what was, you see that and what, what, was your, what was your first thought? I was like, how the fuck am I gonna live over here? <laughs> <laughs> but the cold shit, they was just getting to it. Okay. And they and they and they was enthused. Like just getting to the gangbanging. Yeah. Okay. And they was enthused. Mm -hmm. This was shit. Eighty nine. Mm -hmm. They was enthused by slick. They was interested. In, like like I was they I was they handbook on how to do it. They like an authentic West Coast. They dude. was like oh okay uh -huh. he just from the other side but you know mm -hmm. but it was good homie it was good mm -hmm. homie they showed love out there shout out to all my love niggas over there in the Dunbar area by Dunbar High School they showed me love you know what I mean mm -hmm. but yeah man it was it was it was it was, it was, it was, I was already on a ride, homie, before we even got to the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you told moms you couldn't take it in Texas. What about Texas did you not like? It just, um. Is it just, it just wasn't Dago? Nah, the way I had to live out there. My auntie had me going to church, homie. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my nigga, like, I can't do it. <laughs> Say, this ain't me. This ain't me, homie. Uh -huh. I'm in the house. I'm like, so that lasted about a year, homie. Mm -hmm. And this is your junior year then? Yeah. Uh-huh. A sophomore year. Okay. Okay. And I, I I broke out of there and came back to Cali, went to um, went to Chula Vista High School for a year. And uh, no, no, for the football season. And when I found out what the game that Coach Donovan was was running, mm -hmm. and they wasn't tr they throwing me in with the second string line and shit, all that, I was like, man, I, I played for about three games and t told them niggas to fuck themselves. They came back to Lincoln, homie, mm -hmm. and just. Went to went went there, ran track at Lincoln. I didn't even know I was gonna be able to be that. Shit, I was running with uh with all American niggas. Scott Hammond, um, Marvin Green, Kevin Brown. These niggas was damn near like the fastest niggas in the whole state. I was about shit. to say so. Mitch had wheels back in the day. Then. I was a lead off on the four hundred on the four by one on oh, okay. the four by four hundred. Okay. I mean four by one hundred. Mm -hmm. And um, we did pretty good. But yeah, I, I went to Texas. Them niggas was fast and strong. I did, and I, I got a lot faster and stronger. Came back to Lincoln that next year and was doing my shit. Oh, so you was like doing, you're like working out and doing football workouts. I played stuff ball like? in. I, oh, okay. played, I played ball in Texas too. How, what was that? High school shit. football out there different. Listen here, homie. Let me tell you like this. Okay. Texas. I hope you Texas niggas is listening. You niggas is bigger, you niggas is faster, and you niggas is stronger. Uh -huh. But y'all are not better than us. And they know okay. it. They thought I was uh -huh. the coldest nigga that came out that motherfucker. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But nah, they, 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 they put a lot of money into the, into the athletics out there and the mm -hmm. schools and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the gear, the clothes, how you traveling. These niggas got charter buses for the school. These niggas don't pay for nothing. The first day I said I wanted to play football, they told me to go to that county, nigga. They gave me the whole spirit pack, two, three pairs of cleats. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got a, it's 25 benches in the weight room. You know what I'm saying? We doing simultaneous benching. Mm -hmm. One, two, wow. the whole team. Mm -hmm. You got a spotter, another nigga. Like, mm -hmm. no, they're serious about their, but they not better than us. Yeah, I see. Fundamentally, mm -hmm. but talent-wise, they bigger, they faster, they stronger, but they not better than us. That That's sense. the reason why when them niggas come to California, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, they get their ass beat. <laughs> straight up, straight up. Florida. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's real though. <laughs> okay. That's real though. Yeah, that. Yeah, that's real though, for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, you get you get you get to do your junior and senior year at Lincoln, or just your senior year? I did my senior year. I, I was there the ninth, tenth, and then I was gone, and then I came back into Lincoln. I graduated from Lincoln. Okay. Yeah, I knew yeah. that. I knew that. Mm -hmm. Um, I was about to go with that. So you um, rest in peace, coach player, man. That was my nigga. Oh, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Now you said um, <clears throat> I was listening to uh, another another uh, conversation you were having, or another interview you were having. And I'm um, just talking about like he was like this is I'm from this area. It wasn't no really like choosing 
I, I didn't really have a choice. So my, my, my question off of that is, was there ever like a, like a put on for you or you just was like, this is always where I've been from? By the time, by the time I got put on age, I was already on. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was already, it wasn't no, like, a, like in my neighborhood, they talk that put on shit, but in, on Logan and Euclid, if some niggas beat you up that day, that you just you just got beat up that day. Okay. That don't make you from the turf just because you got your ass beat by a few homies and shit like that over there where we from. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of extra shit that went into that homie. And I mean, you know, I ain't going to get all of the detail about everything, mm -hmm. but it took more than just that to be considered one of the homies, especially when it, during the time when I grew up, you know what I mean? I got you. And by the time I got old enough to where I was like hanging out with the homies, 15, 16, I had already was doing shit to be known by the time I even got to the turf. You I know see, what I'm saying? I see. Crip niggas was coming up to O'Farrell for me when I was 11 and shit like that, 12 years old, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people like like to say like, I don't got no shame in speaking about it, bro. You know, cause it, 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 it I didn't volunteer and all the, all the times I'm gang banging, nigga, I got decent grades. I'm, I don't got no referrals. I ain't getting kicked out of school. I ain't going to juvenile hall or nothing. My shit was strictly fighting niggas. Mm -hmm. My gang banging wasn't snatching no purses or stealing no cars. It was just funking with other niggas. And that wasn't from no color shit. Mm -hmm. That was from, uh, we used to play Pop Warner football against each other when we was eight, mm -hmm. and we ain't never liked each other. Mm -hmm. And now we 13 and 14, and the girl he fuck with like me, and the girl I fuck with like him, and now we see each other at the skating rink, and we getting down. Mm -hmm. That was my gang banging. I see. It wasn't no, I want to be bad, I want to fuck up. Mm -hmm. Nah, mm -hmm. in the Southeast, that's really how it going. A lot of times, motherfuckers try to act like gang banging is some color shit. Most of the gang banging shit just be about girls, homie. Mm -hmm. Nigga be on the phone talking shit to one girl hating on a nigga and she called. He said he gonna do this to you Friday at the skating rink. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, tell that nigga I said what, what, that's where the shit I start see. from. Uh -huh. It wasn't really no niggas was too young to even know the history of half the shit that was even going on, you know? So mm -hmm. You know what man? I I, I kind of already knew that and I felt like it was just an assumption of mine. I felt like I was wrong in that, but mm -hmm. I've, I've told that to people because I remember I, I never got to play for VP. I had to play for South Bay. Mm -hmm. But um, all, my, all my homies that, that like, we, we all went to Valencia Park, so we all lived on the, in this section. And we played and we, we went to Martin Luther King. We played against Skyline Rec. We played against Skyline Pop Warner. They went to a different school. And I would tell people, when I first got to, to Escondido, I would tell people, I think it starts from that. But I felt kind of silly saying that because I know it's a lot of, um, a lot, there's a lot of other things that can and that do go into it a lot of times. Um, but I felt kind of silly saying that, but I always felt like that was a lot of the root. Of Everybody it. got their own way in. Absolutely. Some niggas live over here and just want to be bad and, and ride the bus to the turf and all that type of shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But say, for instance, my story's a little different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's just say Valencia Park and Skyline. Okay. The gang from this neighborhood where this Pop Warner team is wears the same color as the Pop Warner team. Mm -hmm. The gang from this neighborhood, Skyline, they was, now they like the Tigers, but when we was young, they was red and black. Okay. So you already got red and black, green. Here go the two colors from the hood. Mm -hmm. My mama in the stands talking about go big green. You know what I'm saying? My mama like, go green, fuck them up, dude, whatever. Coach telling us you better fuck up number eight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. When you nine and 10. Yeah. If you let that nigga score, we run an extra laps to practice on Monday. So it, this rivalry is being built up. This nigga got me running extra laps. I got them niggas running egg. I scored two times. Them niggas is they don't like me. Mm -hmm. That's when you eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now you older. Mm -hmm. the same, you, now you might fight a little bit after the game. Scrap, scrap. You might not even want to be from the game. Mm -hmm. You might not even be thinking about being from the game. But to go to that skating rink and get into it, mm -hmm. or one of your niggas get into mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and you whoop his ass, or he whoop your ass, and your homies ain't gonna watch that, his homie, next thing you know, nigga, you could have been a, a straight eight, whatever. No, nigga, you're from over there now. Yeah, yeah. You know I what I mean? They don't like you. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you ain't from over there. But them niggas over there from over there, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when you're 13, they want to beat you up. But when you're 19, it's, it's different. Yeah, I hear you. You might have been talking about, I ain't banging and I ain't tripping. That nigga's a full-fledged drive-by shooter that don't like you for fucking his girl or whatever now, when y'all was little. Or mm-hmm. the nigga that wanted to fight you because you scored touchdowns, that nigga's a, that nigga that been to YA a couple times. He, kill, he shoot people now. Mm-hmm. And you talking about you don't bang. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what you gonna do? Yeah, Because he still don't like you. Mm-hmm. So when he see you, when he get at you, what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. You gonna call the police or tell somebody or mm-hmm. see that's the part you gotta figure out. That's where it get trivia. You hear know you. what I mean? I hear you. I hear you. Um now it was it was a different time. They don't really let kids um, you know, leave campus. I, I, they might still do. But I don't really think they do too much of that anymore. I know I graduated Some high school in 06, and we were still able to. I don't know if they're still able to now, but you just don't see it very much. And I've heard uh, several stories of you talking about, like, leaving school to go get lunch and, like, finding yourself in real situations. Lincoln Lunch was off the chain. Mm-hmm. Lincoln Lunch was like, for all of that culture that was hustling and all the teenagers, 25, 24, and under, all them people that was hustling and getting money and doing all that shit, Whatever they were spending their money on and flossing in and low riders and benzes and shit, whatever that was, their main goal was to drive that and pull up to Lincoln's lunchtime. And that's just what it was. I mean, it's a different time now, you know. <laughs> Older niggas was coming up to high schools when we was young, homie, straight mm-hmm. up. You I'm following me? you. It wasn't as taboo as it is now. I'm following you. Now, nigga. You can't even drive past a high school. <laughs> but back then, it was grown niggas pulling up to high schools. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And you would see all type of shit. I remember legendary shit. I remember, like, come on, you hear the legendary names. This shit, Gangsta Earns and Baby Jackson. You know, this might be every day at, at, at Lincoln Lunch. I remember ha- half the homies during my era, niggas got put on at Lincoln Lunch. Wow. You know, I remember it was a lot of L.A. niggas down in San Diego when I was going to Lincoln. Mm-hmm. And they was around trying to hustle and get their money and do shit. I remember going up to Lincoln Lunch and looking across the street on the other side down on Gloria or Ozark or something like that over there. 50, nigga, it'd be like 15, 20 L.A. Crips over there. And we having to, you know, do what we got to do. And mm-hmm. then just going right back to lunch. That's I mean, crazy. going back to school after lunchtime. And niggas can vouch for that. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the young gang members, I, I don't try to glorify the shit, but niggas be acting like they tough. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine like... That's the type of shit you had to yeah. grown ass crips mm-hmm. from LA. That's what you got to do at lunchtime. Get your burger, get it, get down with some niggas, and then get back to school. Mm-hmm. And they might be shooting back up at the school up at you and all that shit. Everything I say, y'all, this this ain't my story. This is every nigga from Southeast story during this era. So you you can go check my my shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Everybody knows. And sometimes it seems like it was so regular to the homies don't trip off of it. But I mean, imagine that. Imagine. Imagine being from San Diego and you're not banging against San Diego niggas, you're banging against LA niggas. Mm-hmm. Like that was the whole early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s, you more likely to get into it with LA Crips than, than San Diego Crips during that time. Because them crazy. niggas, they didn't, they, they was like, oh nigga, this is news. They was everywhere. They didn't uh-huh. give a fuck. They didn't mm-hmm. really know San Diego niggas mm-hmm. wasn't like these other little offshoot cities. We don't even know y'all. We did, I didn't start banging because of some L.A. shit or something like that. I didn't know it was Bloods and Crips in L.A. when we started fucking up in Dago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This yeah, is yeah. not no San Diego. That's the main part that motherfuckers fail to understand. We are not, no disrespect to none of the other cities, but it was a major city, homie. Football, baseball, basketball at the time. Mm-hmm. Major city. A yeah. lot of these other cities that a lot of niggas went to and t- mm-hmm. th- took over, they weren't major cities. So niggas in San I Diego see. had their own identity, mm-hmm. and they didn't really give a fuck about no niggas being from nowhere else. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that, oh, they from here or they from there. San Diego niggas don't think like that, even though maybe they should mm-hmm. because, you know, but I tell you one thing about San Diego niggas. San Diego niggas think they're the toughest niggas in the world. <laughs> you feel me? That's San Diego niggas. They do. Mm-hmm. And maybe they should be a little bit more precautious about how they act or whatever but that's just not the attitude of San Diego niggas San Diego niggas don't give a fuck about no other niggas where they from or none of that type of shit Maybe. now while we're uh, on that you know a, sim- a, a subject of that you know topic of that subject there was a, a situation that happened with you that ended up you know like streets and different things being named after like you and I and more or less the situation talk to me about that as much as you can yeah, man, this is a big, this is a big, we're going to talk about it a little bit, but okay. um, 
Nah, man. Um, I just want to start off by saying rest in peace to Willie James Jones, man. Willie James Jones was a good little dude that went to Lincoln, homie. Um, straight A student, full ride to Cornell, wrestling champion, CIF. I don't know if he won state, but he was doing this shit. Type of nigga to wear a suit to school, you know what I'm saying? And speak in front of everybody and all that type of shit, man. Um, he was at a party at one of the little homies' houses, my little rally, around the corner. And, um, and um, he lost his life that night. It's some, it's some, man, I'm just, this shit going through my head right now, man. I don't, I, like, I, yeah, it'd be tricky to talk about the shit, but anyways, it was some shit going on, man. And after he, um, after that shooting took place up there, he was the only one that died, man, at a, at a fucking graduation party, homie. He had just graduated <laughs> and was um, at a party that night and some cats came through. And it got cracking, and Willie James Jones got killed, man, out there. And um, it was unfortunate, man, very unfortunate, because he had such a bright future. Mm -hmm. But um, somehow some people that was involved was talking about the shit and was talking about it to the wrong people, I understand. And the people they was talking to happened to be the undercover officer. Wow. And that's one of the biggest cases in San Diego that started from that. And they went and snatched some cats up for that situation. And um, next thing you know, front page of the newspaper, they talking about they was coming to get Mitchie Slick on the front of the newspaper, homie. Man. And I wasn't even at the party at the time when the shit took place. Mm. But it was just the beginning of me learning how you be, you, 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 you be in these streets and your name be out in these streets. It's a lot that come along with that other than girls and respect and reputation. It's bad shit that come along with that, too. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, man, so I grew up one, two houses from the corner. Where it happened was maybe three houses up from that corner. And right on that corner is Mount Matt and Willie James Jones. Now, they named the street after Willie James Jones, so that's something that always... You know, even though I wasn't there and didn't have nothing to do with it, just even being involved with that shit and having my name attached to some negative shit like that was just bad for me coming up, man. But yeah, man, that, that was that was pretty much my first my first situation of my name being in the streets on something that big, you know what I'm saying, and being fucked up. Mm -hmm. and then, but that wasn't the last. You know? I hear you. I hear you. Now you see your you see your name and your and your and your your photo on the front page of the paper for you know not for like no, no dope football stuff or like mm -hmm. something negative like that what like what what's your first thought and like how to like what's the next move from there being that young homie you really don't how old were you at the time i think i was probably about 20. okay but you don't really know what to do at that time because you're just in the middle of this shit. You don't really get no brain till you get about 30 years old to where you start thinking, I'm going to keep it 100. You know what I'm saying? Till you get about 30 years old to where you can actually start making right decisions and knowing right from wrong. Because mm -hmm. when you caught up in that shit, it take a little bit more time to develop that brain because of so much shit is coming at you so fast mm -hmm. and you just trying to learn how to survive, homie. Mm -hmm. How to stay alive. I feel real fortunate. I don't call it luck because I, I wasn't, it wasn't luck. I was strategically making sure that I did certain things and didn't do certain things to make sure that I'm still here today. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it wasn't luck. But nah, man, it's it's kind of it's a trip, man, for a young dude, man. Cause like I said, I wasn't ever trying to be bad. I was just trying to make sure motherfuckers didn't think I was no punk mm -hmm. and wasn't gonna be doing nothing to my peoples or my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, being that like, now granted, you weren't you weren't there when that when that situation took place. But you know, your name being so heavily involved with it. Did it like make you think you had to like make some some significant changes or any changes at all at that point? Hmm. Not no good changes. I hear you. Mm -mm. You know when you when you when you when you haven't lived out of town and when you ain't been to some of these places, you kind of like you kind of don't have that vision to see outside of that box that you're in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
all you think is uh, you got to do what the big homies tell you to do. And our big homies at the time, they was telling you keep it gangster, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot going on. I hear you, I hear you. At what point, you know, you, you live in a, like, uh, uh, an interesting life at that time. It sounds like a pretty fast life at that time as well. Very fast. At what point did did the music come along? And at what point did it start to like, like be like the the, the bigger part part of your life? Um, it was several years after that, bro. Like I I, I started rhyming later, homie. Like taking it serious. I mean, we all had um aspirations. Mm-hmm. I think everybody had aspirations. I, I, if anybody tell me that they ain't never wrote them no 16, homie, I think they lying, homie. I don't really? care who they is, bro. We all was writing our little raps and had our little little books and shit, you know what I'm saying, the rhymes or whatever, but I never wanted to be somebody that put his efforts out there and it didn't turn into nothing. Mm-hmm. And so then um, what happened was, was the homies, a couple big homies I had ran across, um, the homie Micah, man, Romy Rome. Shout out to my big bro, bro Romy Rome, and um, the big homie Scarface, homie from Brims. Um, Romy Rome from Emerald and Scarface from Brims had collabed, homie, and started this label called Bottom Up. And um, they had a few artists over there, and one of the artists over there was Damu. And they was doing their shit. And I was seeing the hom- I was seeing the big homies really putting something behind this. I was like, okay, well, shit, maybe they is going to turn some shit into something over here. Mm-hmm. I had never really cared about no rap shit. I was already getting money. Mm-hmm. I think it was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I started pulling up over there to support one of the homies that was over there. Before you know it, I was like, shit, let me get up in this booth or whatever, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. It was a nigga next door making beats. Matter of fact, it was a nigga from Skyline next door making beats, homie. I don't know how that was happening over <laughs> there because it was so active at the time. Uh-huh. I went over there and slid that nigga a couple hundred dollars. He made me a few beats, and I made my first demo. It was three songs on there. I made my first demo. and um, What'd you call it? Um, Did it have a name? I don't think it had no okay, name. Okay, okay. But I had a song in there called I Got It Made. It's still floating around. You a trip if you hear that shit. Oh, okay. And I had one called Mes- Mexican Plug on there. Mexican Plug? Mexican Plug. Oh, okay. Mexican Plug, and I got it made. Mm-hmm. And um, I did I did a cover of uh, Special Ed's I Got It Made, Legendary Record. And the cold shit is later on, a few years later, I end up getting Special Ed on the song and shit like that. But anyways, um, shout out to Special Ed. Sir Jinx made that happen. But yeah, after, like, like a month after I made that demo, the big homie Reese, Black Reese, y'all know the homie Black Reese. Um, Maurice Johnson, man, he had just got out the pen and um, was like, Slick, I'm trying to do the music shit. And um, he hollered at the big homie uh, DJ Jam. Salute to DJ Jam. DJ Jam was on tour at the time with Dr. Dre and Snoop and the Dog Pan and all them. And um, Jam was like, um, Check it out, Reese. I got somebody for you to fuck with. I'm moving around right now. But here, go fuck with Sir Jinx. Now, I don't know if y'all know Sir Jinx, but uh, Sir Jinx is uh, Dr. Drake's first cousin, man. This is this is who, uh, if you've seen the movie. I'm only being this, um, ex- uh, explaining this much because I know it's a lot of youngsters watching this shit. Absolutely. But anyways, but any nigga my age, they know all this shit. Mm-hmm. But Sir Jinx was who, when Dr. Dre left, I mean, when Cube left, um, N.W.A. and he went and made them records and shit. He did all them records with Sir Jinx. Sir Jinx okay. produced them records. Sir Jinx, legendary producer, producer. Um, you know, all them Ice Cube legendary classic albums. You feel me? And um, we went to L.A. to sit with Jinx. We went to the alley. It was me and a few San Diego artists. We went to uh, L.A. and. We rapped for the Sir Jinx, but that same day I, I met a, like a, like a lot of LA niggas. That same day I met uh, the Alcoholics and Exhibit. I met uh, I think I met King T. I met Mac Ten, Dub C. The first day I went to LA, I made a demo. Thirty days later, the next thirty days I'm up here in LA with all the niggas I be seeing on TV and shit. That's crazy. I'm like, you know what, homie? We might got action. Mm-hmm. We might could do this shit. Yeah, yeah. And um, from that point on, it was it was real. Mm-hmm. And I just went to school with Jinx for the next two, three years, homie. And what I did with Sir Jinx is them niggas have been used to making big records, giant records, big studio records. So I basically learned backwards. I learned the big shit first. Mm-hmm. 
Like my first record, Trigger Extra Station, came out in 01. Oh, really, 02, but 01. Um, shit, I mixed all them records on the Neve board, on the big SS, on SSL boards. Like, like I was paying a thousand dollars a mix for these songs on mm -hmm. my first album. That's crazy. You know, a lot of a lot went into that, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, man, support support from from a few homies that, that that put in. Man, shout out to the homies, you know, a lot, the homie, the big homies in the neighborhood put it, dough in, but I put in a lot of my own money too, mm -hmm. along with Rummy Roman. We had a nice little budget. We probably spent about a hundred bands on Trigger Extra Station. Nice. As far as um, as far as mixing, mastering, production, uh, Cricket. Shout out to my brother Cricket. He damn, he produced the whole shit. And um, shit, niggas hit the whole coast on tour. You know what I'm saying? Hopped in trucks, brought new Escalades. We all had new Escalades. We was, everybody's out here getting to their bag though at the time. Mm -hmm. New Escalades and 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 and, and fucking um. And Denali's and shit, put rims on them and TVs and about six deep, tracked all over the whole West Coast. I mean, and went to every project, every hood, That's everywhere fly. on the whole West Coast and really hand to hand promoted Trigger Extra Station. That's fly. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. ended up charting on Billboard, like 13 on Billboard. And it was just, um, it was just us saying, damn, we seen Master P do this shit, we could do this shit too. Mm hmm. And that was my inspiration. I saw P. I was like, damn, this nigga ain't going through these labels like all the rest of these niggas. These niggas is pretty much out the trunk with this shit. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of niggas selling records independent like that. But they was really selling records out the trunk like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's all we got to do. We could do that. Mm -hmm. Because thinking of getting a record deal, that shit wasn't realistic in San Diego. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like going to Death Row and yeah, yeah. Def Jam and all that shit. I mean, jail had busted that move, but we still wasn't looking at that as we didn't even know how the fuck he made that happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it he wasn't was like reality. the exception to the rule. Yeah. yeah, we didn't even know. And plus, I wasn't even rapping at the time. You know what I'm saying? I was a okay. fan at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really know nothing about the industry. But once Master P came out and we saw that you could make your own records, produce your own records, and push your own records out the trunk, uh, nigga, I was up at Fanmark going for mine. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that shit was working, too. That's straight up. up. That's what's up. What, what? What led you to the music? Were you just looking for like another outlet, something else nah, to do? when I went, good question. Because when I went over here to the studio supporting one of the homies, mm -hmm. I saw that this label was putting shit down and making sure that niggas, niggas had whips over there, niggas okay. was getting money. And, okay. I mean, I was getting money too, you know what I'm saying? I already was low riding and all that shit at this time. Mm -hmm. But I saw that they was making moves, traveling to do uh, conferences and music seminars and niggas went and did Jack the Rapper up in the Bay and you know, Damu was putting it down, shooting videos, and all. I was like, shit, man, I, I could do this, you yeah. feel me? Mm -hmm. And, um, shit, that's what started it, homie. That's what's up. Yeah. And this is like, this is it? like 2000, this is like, this is like 99. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're, and you're like, like 22, 23 or so? No, I'm a little older. I'm like 24. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So you like, you got, got into the music late, but it kind of took right. off, took off kind of quick for you, though. I could say took off. I mean, well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say took off, but I mean, because like, because taking off to me, right, right, it's right. like shit, you know, s superstar status. Yeah, yeah, you feel yeah. Me? But I mean, like, you, you saw some success early, is getting what I'm it saying. going, yeah, 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 for sure. And that, do, do you think, do you think, had it not happened that way for you, you would have stuck with it? Mm, I don't know, but I know, yeah, not seeing nothing from it, nah. Mm -hmm. But what we were seeing back then wasn't a whole lot of money. We didn't even know how to make money off off, off music back then. Mm -hmm. We thought, uh, get popular and then it'll just come, however. But we didn't actually know how to put it together. And, and, and Because the information wasn't out there. You got to understand, man, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. that was a time when niggas, the labels wasn't, they didn't want to, everybody had a fucked up deal 25 years ago, 20 years ago, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Niggas didn't know the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Niggas didn't know the business. So... It wasn't until way later that we, I mean, it wasn't no make a record and put, it wasn't no make a record and put it up on one of these little uh, uh, DSPs or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, 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 niggas wasn't even streaming. Mm -hmm. It was strictly hard nosing out the trunk, homie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. CDs and tapes I out the you. trunk. Mm -hmm. If you, um, I'm sure you love music now. Oh yeah, love love to That's listen. The only reason I fuck with it, right? Exactly. But I mean, it start it started off as like, it sounds like. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like it started off like like you a hustler. Like I see some money here. It started off representing the hood. Okay. 
it was another version of representing the hood. Okay. Them niggas over there talking they shit over here. It's just a competitive thing representing the hood. Letting them niggas know over there know. Letting the L.A. niggas know. Letting the Long Beach niggas know. Letting the New York niggas know that Dago niggas is active. That's what it started off, just representing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, everybody got artists shit. We got niggas out here fresh, too. We got niggas fly, too. We got niggas as gangsters, too. Mm -hmm. And so me repping for the city is what, for the hood and then for the city, it was the motivation. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's dope. I, I can't. I can't remember what year it was, but I, I remember. I remember turning on the TV and seeing you on MTV. Mm -hmm. and I remember thinking that was so fly, bro. Just like being from here, and like you said, like you like you've mentioned a couple of times, we, you know, up to that point, and really since then, we haven't really had nobody. You know what I'm saying? We got we got you know Nick Cannon, but that it's, it's a little different. You know what I mean? Nick Cannon stardom don't really come from music. A exactly. And so that's what people. Exactly. Are and that's why I said it's a little they be different. Question: Well, Nick, 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 Nick strength is more in other other avenues, mm -hmm. and he's a beast in those other yeah, avenues. Absolutely. But far as just pressing a music button, mm -hmm. that ain't that ain't necessarily being that great for Nick with rap. Now with other type of artists, yeah. Killing them. Mm -hmm. Females and shit like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah. rap shit, mm -hmm. we, ain't, we ain't made it happen yet, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through that pipeline. But I mean, shit, it can still happen, I believe. You know absolutely, what I mean? absolutely. And then also, not, and, and I, I get it, if you're, if you're an artist, you want to see like an, an artist from your town before you kind of do it so you can kind of like see a pathway to it. Mm. But I mean, like as far as just like, like you said, just, just business. We didn't have no blueprint, bro. Oh, not at all, not at all, no blueprint. And I, and I feel like, um, I feel like once we, and I feel like you've laid out a pretty good blueprint. To but, a certain degree. Yeah, but, but I, I ain't gonna lie, we still, I'm gonna tell you what we, what we don't have in San Diego. Okay. The, the, I, mean, I don't wanna skip over your questions and shit. Uh, we good. But um, we learned from the Bay's blueprint. Okay. We didn't learn from LA because LA is big, big time, big offices, mm -hmm. Interscope, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, priority. Mm. Them niggas ain't gonna let us get in them offices. I mean, imagine if Priority Interscope was in San Diego. Ain't no niggas from two hours away gonna get into that office before us right, down here. Right, right. So that's kind of how that is up there. They're mm -hmm. gonna have more people in planning, because all is, it's all about who you know. Mm -hmm. It's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. How some San Diego niggas gonna have better relationships at Interscope, wherever, record labels that's in LA, than LA niggas. That's not gonna happen like that. Mm -hmm. so, so, so for us, we had to find another route. And, the, and we was more embraced, I was more embraced in the beginning by Bay artists. The first record I was ever on that was distributed was a Bay album, Bullies with Fullies. Salute to my nigga Juice, you know what I'm saying? Glad my nigga got home after doing all that time and shit. But yeah, we had a connection with the Bay, and not because of the style and the, and the, and the shit we was on, but just because of the opportunity. The Bay niggas made their own way mm -hmm. with the independent shit. Mm -hmm. The only difference about the Bay in, in San Diego, Southern California, is I think the gang banging shit split, your, split our fan base mm. in half from the beginning. You're not finna travel to the next hood. Like out there in the Bay, if you ain't funking with this hood and these two hoods ain't funking, everybody else is fair game. They might fuck with your music. Well, being from Southern California, it's gonna start up with, well, is he a blood or a crip? Automatically, the crips ain't gonna like your music straight off the back. Now, it's, it's changed now a little bit over time, mm -hmm. but back then, niggas was super active, gang banging, tripping. If you wasn't a blood, then the bloods wasn't really gonna fuck with you. If you wasn't a crip, the crips wasn't gonna fuck with you until you was a superstar. Mm -hmm. Now, if you was a superstar, but just another nigga listening to another nigga hood shit, it mm -hmm. wasn't rocking. That ain't how it was going back then. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was different times. I mean, very different times. Even though it wasn't that long ago. I mean, I guess a nigga that's 19 or 23 might think it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't that long ago, homie. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Not at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What was it? Um, you said you said the, you said the the Bay embraced you like musically Bay, first. Musically. Okay. It, what happened was was um. Well, for me, my way to the Bay is um, my nigga Janky, rest in peace, man. We had a cold ass nigga out here, man. It was a real executive nigga, busting moves, homie. The homie Janky, man. Jermaine Salmon, salute to my nigga, man. Played ball over there at Helix, homie, but he grew up on, on the block over there on on, um, on Reynolds, you know what I'm saying? And um, I mean, on Palin. And um, the homie was like, Went to Northridge Film School, homie. He had a smart song, but he still was a street nigga. Mm -hmm. And he just embraced all the niggas in Southeast that was rapping from our side and really took on managerial position for all of us. You know what I mean? And Jank had us racking, homie, you feel me? And then um, right when it was kind of getting to going, 
2007, I think it was, Jank got sick down there in Texas for some floods and shit. But at the time, the nigga was every day with R. Kelly, every day um, videographer for R. Kelly. Wow. And I mean, that nigga was there mm -hmm. doing a lot of the bullshit. I see. That's and where the wild came and from. And he wasn't, he wasn't, no, I'm just now finding out that he uh, was there then. Got you. But he was very stressed about what was going on. Uh, and he was, up in, and how y'all think everybody was just sitting around that R. Kelly shit? Mm -hmm. No, them niggas was over there trying to figure that shit out for Kells. Like, them niggas would be like, bro, I don't know. Don't leave him. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> like, Jank would tell me certain shit, but he uh -huh. wouldn't tell me all the shit. Right, right, right. And I didn't find out what was going on. Kind of the stories he's telling me until I went. He's able to connect the dots. I was. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And he was stressed about that. Them niggas wasn't sitting around just okaying. Well, I can't speak for everybody else, but my nigga wasn't okaying that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He, I don't know what was going on, but he was distraught about that shit. But the homie was up there fucking with Kells or whatever and got sick. It was some floods that had took place in Houston, some big floods after the New Orleans floods, I think it was. Okay. And, you know, the mosquitoes and all that shit get to coming up during it. And the homie got some type of flu, homie, and died, homie. Oh, man. Jank died, bro. Niggas don't know how far we would be. Rest that was like, like my baby, mm -hmm. my, 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 my Jermaine Dupree, my, my Suge, my, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? My, my nigga that was, I was Lil Wayne, he was this. I was Jigga, he was Dame. Mm -hmm. My, we had the team yeah, yeah, on yeah. the label together, bro. Uh, uh. This nigga died right when I was getting going, bro. Man. And then I had to take on all responsibility of doing both. And come on, bro. Mm -hmm. There ain't too many niggas that's out here rapping, doing all the artistry shit and doing all the executive shit. Mm -hmm. Master P was about the only nigga that got that off for real, for real. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a few other niggas that have, but for the most part, all the niggas I was in competition with at the time, them niggas wasn't having to do all the shit I was having to do. Mm -hmm. And um, it became real hectic for a minute, bro. I bet. What, what, was, that, what was that time like? Did you... And did you ever think like I gotta find somebody to kind of like step into these shoes, or you just was like nah, I gotta, because I, gotta I always do it felt now. like it had to be a homie. It that had to sense. be a homie because everybody sense. else that's their homie. Mm -hmm. That wasn't no nigga they found. Mm -hmm. Dame Dash and Jigga was already. Jim and Cameron was already. Mm -hmm. Baby and which was already. It, it, you ain't finna because whoever that executive nigga is, he already got a nigga from where he from that mm -hmm. he's gonna feel allegiance to or that he thinks is the hottest nigga mm -hmm. or whatever. That's what I be talking about. That plug that's needed in San Diego, that button push. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in San Diego that could just put that but button and have you have you on. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Nick Cannon can do that, but Nick best th that's mostly film. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's no there's no San Diego executive. They could be like, come on, I got you, Yunsa, you on. Like, like, like how big you could just reach out to uh, Shipes or whatever he did and make that happen. We don't have that button push like that in San Diego. And mm -hmm. it's really about all that, especially with street music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Street music. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it was tricky, homie. And man, I just did. I just went for what I knew, homie, and just kept hustling, homie, and kept putting my own bag into it. Because all the homies that had came in the beginning, and was putting bread in to get it going. After they didn't see that shit flip back like dope money, they was done. You feel mm -hmm, me? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, you got it slick. Mm. And um, it really, it really needed to be somebody. That's one of our problems in San Diego. I mean, we changing up a little bit now, but nobody wants to do the other jobs in hip hop in the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody wants to be a dope writer, hip hop writer. Um. Shout out to the homie Soren Baker. Um, nobody wants to be the um, the real manager. Nobody wants to be the real PR people. Like, you know, when you got to pay for all this shit, mm -hmm. if you a L.A. nigga from Compton and you get popping, and you get some, your cousin, auntie, somebody do PR There's a, in the crew. Somebody saying. shoot videos down the street. If you a bay nigga and you hot on the block, it's a nigga on the block that shoot dope videos. Mm -hmm. But being from San Diego, you know, nigga had to pay for everything because mm -hmm. everybody in San Diego at the time just wanted to rap. Nobody else wanted to do nothing else. And before Mitchie Slick put out Trigger Ration Station, it was about five rap albums, my nigga, or 10 rap albums. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Legion of Doom. Shout out to um, SET. Shout out to uh, uh, Gangsta Earn. I, I missed a few, but it was, you know, it was a gang, Legion of Doom. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, it was niggas, man, but 
that 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 rush. Everybody dropping shit mm -hmm. after Trigger Racer Station. Cricket was getting down. Steve Vicious was getting down. Mm -hmm. It was other niggas getting down. Uh, Baby Scar. Out, out, and Big June, them niggas had already dropped before I had ever started doing shit. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't where like, okay, we got a hella artists right now putting out records. If you rapped, you rapped. The niggas that rapped, you knew they rapped. Mm -hmm. That's you know, every hood didn't have twenty niggas that rapped. I see. Each hood had one nigga that rapped, <laughs> and that's what yeah, he rapped. You uh -huh. feel me? Uh -huh. And then the independent shit, Master P, put your own records out. That's what gave everybody the, you know, saying, oh shit, we could do this shit. Let's go. You that feel makes me? sense. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. At, at what point? Well, no, I'm sorry. Before I get to that, being the um, you know. Like you said, there's a lot of dope artists here, a lot of guys that have done some really dope things here. Mm -hmm. But being being recognized as like one of the main guys, as one of the top guys, a lot of uh, like, uh, of course, a lot of people love you and like you know, are drawn to you. But a lot of what comes with that is also a lot of you know animosity and a lot of hatred. Oh yeah. How did you, how did you deal with that, and what was that like for you? It was fucked up, homie, it, it, and I didn't handle it. it it's it's kind of what fucked everything up, you know what I'm saying? And not just for me, but for all the San Diego artists. Mm -hmm. It's such a small pie, homie, and everybody wants a piece of the pie, you feel me? And then at the same time, it's like, it's not no real industry down here. So therefore, the knowledge that it takes to make the rap shit go, niggas don't really have it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a lot of misconceptions. It'd be a lot of niggas mad for nothing. It'd be a lot of niggas hating because they saw you do this shit right here. And they think that some big old bag come with that. Mm -hmm. Nigga don't know. Nigga waited in line for two weeks and mm -hmm. didn't get, pay. nigga had to pay to do that shit. Mm -hmm. But when you from San Diego, you, you don't really understand how the rap game works. Mm -hmm. So niggas will sit up and be mad at a nigga for some shit that they really ought to be like, nigga, you wouldn't even want to do what the fuck I had to do to get in this position. I see. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the knowledge of the business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Niggas will be mad at you because you got all this rap money. Nigga ain't even made a dollar. Niggas spit money because they'll see you on TV with this nigga or see you with this artist or some shit like that. And it ain't just for me. I know all, because little niggas is having a little success right now in San Diego. Niggas is having way more success than we had when we first came in. Mm -hmm. And I and I could just imagine what they going through, homie. I mm -hmm. know, I know. I know it's tricky for them because it was tricky as fuck for me. But I was already known in the streets before I was... I mean, super known, like the most known homie from the hood damn near right, right. in my bracket before the rap shit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said it to the camera, nigga. Yeah. Slick way back in before the music shit. So by the time the music shit came, it was like, oh, no, we 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 got to get him. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah, me? So it was rough on me. It I was see. hard. I ain't going to lie. Mm -hmm. And niggas don't really understand. It was a lot of shit that I had to stop doing. A lot of stuff that I had to do different, and uh, a lot of a lot of niggas tried this shit. And some of the homies ain't here no more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You get that notoriety to where you the like Big Y would always tell me, homie, rappers get it the worst. When you the rapper from the neighborhood, you don't get the leniency on a lot of shit that everybody else do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of trib to go. It's very deep, homie, and people don't really understand what it's like. You know. Mm -hmm. I could point out little things, but like, like say for instance, like, um, you know, you a known member that's out here funking in these streets, but then you go to pick your kid up from school, but unless your kid go to school out in goddamn uh, fucking rancho, wherever the fuck, it's people that know where your kid go to school at. Mm -hmm. But they only know you. You don't know them. You, they only know you because you a rapper. You mm -hmm, feel me? Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time. I said, you know what it's like to walk in the room with a thousand people in the room or even 500 people in the room. Even you walk in the room with 500 people in the room. They know your name. They know what hood you from. They know what high school you went to. They know the name of your best friend. They know the name of your best friend that got killed. They know what neighborhood they killed him. They know what favorite color your favorite color is. They know all the cars that you had in the last five, six years. They know who you don't like. They know, they know everything about you, these people. And you don't know shit about none of them. Never seen them in your life, and they know all this about you. Mm -hmm. That's tricky, homie. Mm -hmm. 
That's tough to wrap your mind around. Being up at Fairmark and you trying to sell a record to everybody that you can, and it's a little nigga walking up to you, homie. Gangsta little nigga, and you don't know whether to extend your hand to shake his hand or whether he finna come. However, that's a tricky game that you gotta learn how to do, and I'm pretty sure a lot of niggas don't really know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have no blueprint to do that shit, but over the years, you learn and figure out shit, and some shit you never figure out. It don't never get comfortable to be in the mall and some nigga walk up to you while you with your kid and be like, Slick, oh, what's up, homie? You don't know what the... Fortunately, the majority of the time for me, it been all love, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it ain't always, always right, love. Right, right. It's, all, it's you know. Mm -hmm. So you know, you gotta watch that shit. Uh, I'm sitting, and it's it's funny you said even you. I'm sitting here thinking about it. Like I'm, you know, I ain't got no like enemies like that. But I've I've had you know different situations with different people, and they tell me they go. You had a girl that had a nigga that liked her, but she liked you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Or or even or even situations where people were like like business don't go the right way or. We we got into it on the court or something, and I, and I be I be in all of these high schools, and people they know where I'm about to film at. You know, right. not people, not many people know my studio right. unless they've been here. Right. But they know what school. But if a nigga want to see you, he can come find you. One hundred percent. And I I I, after my first little situation, dude was like, right, I'm gonna see you, bro. And I was mm -hmm. like, all right, bro, I'm gonna see you too. Mm -hmm. And I thought about like this nigga, he, he gonna see me he gonna way know. before I see him. And he go yeah, he gonna know when he gonna he gonna be prepared. That's what I'm. That's what I mean. Y'all see each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm Mitchie Slick from wherever, whatever, whatever the homies done did in the hood this week. And then my name on the flyer is going to be here this weekend. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, then, but then you got to, but, but hold on. You also uh, got to uh, give a good show too, though. Uh, so you got to mentally be on deck to give a good show. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, mentally be on deck for whatever might, you're never going to get the best show that you can get. Right. And you're never going to be as on deck as you could be. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. When did um, when did it get to a point where you was like, all right, like when I when I'm in the town, I just kind of kind of this this is your town. You yeah. gonna, you gonna you gonna do what you want for the most part. But when when did it or did it ever get to a point when you was like, like you know what? When I come when I'm in town, I'm gonna just go ahead and sit it down. You know it's a trip. Turn it the other way for me. Oh, my bad. You good? You know it's a trip. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people's are gonna be with you in the beginning when it look like it's popping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause you got some niggas that's really down with you, mm -hmm. and then you got some niggas that's just down for what potentially could happen for them being around you. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For the come up. And so the older and the time goes by, the less time the homies got to be fucking with your shit if it ain't gonna be mm -hmm. beneficial for you. I mean for them. So you know when we was all. 22, 23, whatever, niggas was on deck for every video shoot, for every show, for every whatever. But once a nigga get a little older and start having jobs and start having kids and start having shit like that, the numbers of people that's gonna roll with you, they start shrinking and getting lower and smaller and smaller. And then you be like in between, okay, well, I only got a few niggas around. Everybody ain't here to be with you. So then it gets to where you like, you know what, homie? I'm just gonna move by myself on this one. And then when you start thinking about, damn, you gonna move by yourself? You gonna go over there by yourself? Nah, I ain't gonna go over there. Now, now you like shit, man. I ain't going nowhere today. I'm gonna sit my ass down. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it took it took a while to get to that point, but at the same time, homie, it's just like with everything else, homie, you just learn how to handle it, homie. Mm -hmm. And if you're fortunate, you can move right and don't have to put yourself in no tricky situations. But I can't say it's been all peaceful. It ain't been all good. But I'm 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 grateful that I'm here now. But it, I, I can say for sure it ain't it ain't from luck. Cause there's a lot of shit I don't do, you know. You damned if you do, damned if you don't. You know, you fuck around and um, you 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 don't you don't be in Dago while you out trying to hustle and make shit happen. And then all the haters want to say is, oh, he ain't in Dago. He ain't. I don't. This ain't new shit. I don't hear this shit no more. I be here so much. But in but while a nigga was out trying to make it happen, oh, he don't be in Dago. He he. Cause really they're just looking for anything to say. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was in Dago in the hood every day and walking around down Logan in front of Dr. J's every day, oh, that nigga, he ain't made it. He's mm -hmm. just walking around, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it, you damned can't. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. You, you mm -hmm. can't make him happy, homie. Mm -hmm. So when you get to a certain point to where you be like, you know what, fuck these niggas, man. Let me just do what I got to do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I yeah, it, it took a while, but shit, we finally got there because I don't give a fuck right now. Fuck niggas. You know what I'm saying? Respect. Straight up. Yeah. Respect. Respect. What would you say is the, uh, the high point of your career, of your music career? Mm, 
I had a few, homie. Okay. You know what I mean? High point, I guess I would say, um, because it's been so long, homie, it's been different eras. Mm -hmm. High moments, you know what I'm saying? Just um, probably traveling around around the um, around the world, goddamn, with strong arm steady, homie. That that, that I, I for the, for those that don't know, man, I I still we still a group. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Minty slid, crying down, feel the agony, homie. Uh, Exhibit was uh, who brought the group together in the beginning. But um, yeah, traveling the world, homie, and being able to just you know rock shows in Europe and motherfuckers saying my s s singing my songs and they don't even know English and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Or, mm -hmm. or maybe being on on the Rock the Bells tour with Talib Kweli and walking out dolo by myself. You know, doing Rock and Mitchie Slick in front of fifty thousand. You feel me? Or 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 me and Auntie Gladys Knight, me being on a Queen Latifah show with Gladys Knight, but. The one that niggas talk about is that MT that uh that uh the basement shit. Okay. Rock in the basement. Mm -hmm. That was official. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A nigga wasn't even supposed to rock. I didn't even have no plans to do that. Really? Hell no. Nah. How did that happen? Exhibit was on was going out there to do a press run before his album come out, and uh, he was taking Cron down the field, and I was like, I want to go. He was like, Well, fuck it, you know, shit, you can go. Nigga, the tickets was a thousand dollars one way. Mm. I had to buy my own ticket to go. I just went just to go. Mm -hmm. This is the type of investments niggas was making. Mm -hmm. Went out there and uh, I, was, I hate to cut you off. What was your? You said just to go. What was your like your reasoning for you? Just wanted to see, experience um, everything. I or was like? just gonna move with the homies because, I mean, because I was moving in Dago and moving in LA and Southern Cali doing shows, just trying to get on, homie. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's who I got through, got on with. It, Sir Jinx was working with Exhibit when I first came around. Exhibit, Liquid Crew, you know what I'm saying? Niggas was all around. And they literally put me with Exhibit. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, you go hang with Exhibit. You know what I'm saying? This 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 how we're going to get you get you popping and shit. And, um, and uh, so I was around Exhibit at the time. And I was mm -hmm. touring with him. And the nigga was like, I'm finna go to um, New York. And I, I didn't want to stop mobbing. So I paid my money and went on the motherfucking trip. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And um, we had did um, a few things that day. And it came time to go on um, Rap City or whatever. And five minutes before that nigga was gone, I didn't even think it was going to go on. But you know, I was ready. <laughs> That's what's up. And he was like, what's up? Y'all want to do the basement? It was like, hell yeah, let's go. Five minutes before. And that's what y'all saw. You know what I'm saying? That's I didn't great. even know I was getting on. And then that shit ended up making classic, like a basement classic. They mm -hmm. put us like like legendary freestyles and mm -hmm. shit like that. I was going to mention that next. That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's the one you stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Stay that's ready. Got to. Because when I came in, homie, that's what it was about. Mm -hmm. Getting on today is, I don't know what niggas call getting on today because it's such a different thing. Mm -hmm. But at that time, getting on was like, okay, it's the West Coast movement. Everybody was basically off the NWA tree. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nobody out there wasn't off the NWA tree. Mm -hmm. The only nigga that really, YG damn near the first nigga that got on that wasn't under the N NWA tree, you mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Whether it was Westside Connection, whether he was off of MAC-10, Dub, Cube, whatever. So at the time, you know, it was like how you get on is you be at these influential ass shows in LA, the Roxy, the wherever the fuck, and when um, DJ Quick or corrupt look to the side of the stage and be like, hey, hey, I, hey, I got my nigga so-and-so. Matter of fact, t -t 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 nigga, and you come out and bust mm -hmm. at the House of Blues, nigga, on one of them nights, and it's L.A., mm -hmm. all the rap niggas in the audience, mm -hmm. and you get yours off. That was how you got on. That's dope. You know, you have to do your shit. Yeah, yeah. Freestyle. In front of a real crowd. In front of a real crowd, mm -hmm. and a real show, mm -hmm. and with real legendary niggas. So fucking Tash from the Alcoholics call you out, or Exhibit call you out on stage, or, or Corrupt call you out on stage, mm -hmm. or something like that. And it was it, thirsty MCs on the side of them. Shit, Razzcasses, and everybody, Saphirs, and, you know, all type of niggas on the side and once you finally be the nigga that they look and say bitch you slick chick and you go out there like real rap shit homie that's fly not no fucking no real hip hop shit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like the only niggas that was really was busting at the time like mm -hmm. you gotta this is the this is the this is the Raz cast, the exhibit. These are niggas that are MCs, but gangster niggas. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Corrupts and shit. It wasn't no, you can't rap type shit. Niggas, hey. you no, know, everybody was busting. Mm -hmm. 
and that was that era. It was a real gladiator school for, for a nigga that's trying to get on. Mm -hmm. Niggas was still like battling niggas out in the street and shit. Nigga walk outside of the goddamn whatever club in LA and it'd be some niggas from Detroit or from goddamn uh, Chicago, freest and nigga Dr. Dre over there watching. Wow. And they calling you out in front of Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. And you got to serve niggas and shit like, niggas don't even know about that part of mm -hmm. my coming up. Mm -hmm. I had to do that because I couldn't go the death row route. I couldn't go to, because mm -hmm. that was gang shit. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a San Diego nigga, Damu nigga. I come to L.A., the only niggas that really opened the doors was the niggas that wasn't entrenched in the gangbanging shit, and they was MCs. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found my way. Shout out to the alcoholics. Shout out to, no, I ain't taking nothing from my niggas. You know, King T, niggas was all gangster niggas, but niggas was hip hop influenced gangster niggas. And okay. that was how I had to get on. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to rock a show like a hip hop nigga mm -hmm. at the time, you know, mm -hmm. shit. Of those, of those times of uh, being called on stage and like walking out of a, out of a club and having a battle, any, uh, any, any stories from those times coming to mind? Of like um, when you had to perform or when you had to battle someone? Yeah, a couple times. Who was it? I remember early. I remember early days. Shout out to my nigga Recipes Big Y. Nigga, me and Big Y battled nigga in front of all the Emerald Hills and Lincoln Park niggas at the goddamn park and in fucking Chula Vista. Talking about straight khaki suit gangster niggas battling nigga like mm -hmm. early days. Break bread records, wrong kind records. We battling like gangster niggas. I remember that was a good showdown between me and Big Y, homie. And that wasn't no shit we was really used to doing. But niggas was that much into MCing. You know what I'm saying? To where that, it, it, plenty, plenty times, I mean, stepped out on the block in LA mm -hmm. in front of niggas. Mm -hmm. it, the shit I was talking about really happened. It wasn't no just, yeah, no, shit really happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strong Arm Steady, you said, um, did Exhibit put you guys together? Um, Strong Arm Steady was a, was a, was a, was a freestyle movement, homie. No, 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 no. Mixtape movement. Mm -hmm. At the time, 50 and everybody was doing the mixtapes. I don't know if niggas remember Dipset had the mixtapes yep, going crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. And we was the West Coast version of all that shit. Okay. So, Strong on Steady started out as a movement. Alcoholics, um, Barbershop MCs, Phil, The Agony, Crime Down, Saphir, Raz Cast, gang of homies on these mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? But most of the niggas in the in the circle was already had deals and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So when it was time to roll, Exhibit took me crying down the field with him. And we was the ones pretty much the hub for the mixtape. We was recording them all over there at the pad with crying down and, and Phil over there. They had a house called a steady house over there on Hudson. And we would all be over there in West LA over there by the Mansfields. Most like right on the outskirts of the Playboy Crips and the Mansfield Crips. Right over there, homie, and, and, and we just birthed that whole movement over there. But mm -hmm. when it was time to get on the road, the only niggas that wasn't signed to deals and shit was me and Crondon and Phil. Mm -hmm. And so X would take us with him. And I was already doing my shit, mm -hmm. working on my shit. But um, just because of the, what we had politically put together, they let a nigga roll with them, homie. They let so. a nigga roll with them and showed me the ropes. They was already homies and fucking with each other. Mm -hmm. But they let a nigga roll, man, and I just played my part. I was I was the I was the henchman out of the group, you know what I'm saying? And we made a lot of noise with that and got a big ass hip hop following with that. And motherfuckers all over the world fuck with Strong Arm Steady. And we even recorded recently some records right now that we about to do. We got another Mad Lib album coming out right now. And um shit, you know. Shit, we still rocking. Yeah, that to your point about you know uh, having a you know a hip hop fan base all over the world. I just had my my guy uh, Rick Scales. Have you met Rick Scales before? Uh, I, I know of Rick Scales. He um you know he does uh, the slapping hands uh, like hip hop showcase here in town. Right. He um he lived. I forget if he said he was either living in New Orleans or Hawaii at the time. Mm -hmm. But he said he heard about you living in either New Orleans or Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And he said he got out here and he was like, "Oh, niggas from here." He said he had been listening to you out there. I was like, I "Where?" Went on, man, nigga, my first tour, the first tour I went on was with the Alcoholics, homie. I, I did thirty six cities, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Niggas don't know. Me and the homies put our bread together, hopped in a goddamn bullshit ass camper. We thought that was gonna work. A mobile home. <laughs> we needed a tour bus, but for some reason we, we thought, thought beds driving is good. Uh -huh. Nigga, we running one of them America, whatever the fuck. Nigga, and drove all the way to motherfucking New York from San Diego. Stopped 20 times in between, nigga, in the winter. Pushed. Nigga, I'm rocking in Rhode Island, New York, nigga. New Orleans, mm -hmm. Detroit, mm -hmm. Albuquerque, Vegas, Arizona, 
my first tour, my nigga, That's was with crazy. the alcoholics, homie, mm -hmm. and the living legends, homie. I don't know if niggas know, but far as independent groups go, independent hip hop groups go, shout out to all the living legends, man. Them niggas embraced me and let me get on they on their hip hop ass tour and do my gangster shit, man. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, it, it, niggas put in work for this shit, straight up. What was that like being the only like 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 gangster act on a hip hop? It was, I didn't know what I was doing, bro. Okay. But they loved me just because the nigga was still rapping though. Okay. Nigga, I'm hitting stages in Philly, and you know Philly, they, they don't give a fuck. They mm. boo the fuck out you. Mm -hmm. Just in case you young niggas know, if y'all ever fortunate enough to get to go around the country, and you go to you go to Philadelphia, nigga, don't go. They don't give a fuck. They, them is the rudest fans in the world. If they love you, they love you. Uh -huh. But you ain't never seen no shit like this. Okay. If they, if you ain't right, nigga, they gonna look at you like you stupid and boo, boo. <laughs> Philly niggas will boo you. Straight up. But they didn't boo me. They fuck with me. That's you know love. what I mean? That's no, it was dope, homie. But it was just a lesson, homie. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily my, um, my genre of shit. But I learned a lot of shit, mm -hmm. and I built relationships, and I'm still cool with all them niggas. Love all them niggas, the living legends, the alcoholics, all them just from that mission. Mm -hmm. You know, shit. It was it was just a learning experience, homie. Straight mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change none of that shit. I would never take that part out of my story. Mm -hmm. You get to do all these, you know. Musically, you get to do all these dope, amazing things. Travel the country, leave the country from time to time. When you um, are you. Are, like in between all that, are you coming back to San Diego or, or is all this keeping you outside of the town? I, I was, was keeping me going because we based out of Vegas at the time. Okay, that's what I thought. And so once you, um, you know, you're... you're LA and Vegas. We in LA. I got a house in LA. I got a house in Vegas. Oh, that's fly. My shit is all over the place on me and I'm just chasing the game. I'm chasing the game. Mm -hmm. Family life fucked up because I ain't there with them. I'm ready to drop a, wherever the fuck the rap game tell me to be, I'm there. I did that shit for like 10 years straight, homie, and really neglected a lot of my other shit at that time, too. You know what I'm saying? Make some money, invest in some shit, buy a house or some shit like that. Niggas was buying houses in Vegas at the time. We was just buying a house. Every time a nigga make 20 or 30 bands, you buy another house because the equity in the motherfuckers was going up so fast. Mm -hmm. 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, nigga just make 30, buy a house. Make 30, buy a house. And didn't know what was coming. Nigga really threw their money away buying houses during that time. That's mm -hmm. when that crash hit and everybody lost their shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of them times, a lot of shit I was doing with rap went into that shit, bro. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, you said like neglected a lot of things. Have you been able to like repair some of those things that you were, that you neglected? Hell yeah. That's I dope. traded a lot of shit in now. I traded in a lot of the shit that I was doing on the jumbo level to actually be around my fam over the last six, seven years right now. That's dope. And, um, Cause some of them years you can't, you know, some of them crucial ass years, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't get back with, with with your kids, bro. You feel me? And so I sacrificed a lot of the jumbo shit I was doing to be able to be there for my baby. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Straight up. I was about to ask if you have any regrets, but it sounds like that may be one of them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm, nah, because it, 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 the reason I did it was was for 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 my family. I got you. you know what I mean? Everything don't work all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if it don't kill you, you know, it make you stronger. You feel me? Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, doing all this, um, now granted, you're, you know, an older, more mature person now, but doing all this running around outside of the city, when you finally come back, what was that? Like, how much different was the city now? And like, what was your, what, where was your mindset at at that point? Well, I was still always here, so it wasn't no different. Okay. But, okay. But um, now you just start to notice little shit man and it was it would always be some fucking turmoil about something but i understand it though i understand it you know like i i look at it from the other perspective like see niggas that just be out in the street saying shit you start understanding what hate and hate hatred is a lot of hatred you gotta understand they gotta love you to hate you mm -hmm. he only hates you because you doing something that he want to do or mm -hmm. that he love or something like that. If you was a bum on the street, nigga wouldn't give a fuck about you. You feel me? So like, so like, like I said, not understanding the music industry. San Diego don't really understand this shit. LA niggas get it. It's a lot of niggas in, in, imagine how many hip hop industry millionaires it is that came out of Los Angeles. Just imagine how big that number is. Too many to count. How many came from Dago? How many niggas made a million dollars off rap from San Diego? Probably none. Maybe if they, if, if so, I don't know about them. Probably none. Mm -hmm. 
Now, don't get my nigga Rob Stone fucked up though. He's the only. He's the don't one person. Don't get my nigga fucked up. He's the one person. Niggas can talk all that shit they want about about whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't get Rob Stone when you start counting who Dago and all that. Ain't none of you niggas doing bigger numbers than Rob, Rob Stone. And, uh, sorry, you ain't. So you know what I'm saying, but but um. But I'm saying, even if it's five niggas, come on, man, it's 500 niggas in L.A. that made a million dollars off rap. Mm -hmm. That's only two hours away. Mm -hmm. When you start doing numbers on shit like that, that shit don't sound right, homie. Mm -hmm. And so, can you tell me that, like, L.A. niggas rap that much better than San Diego niggas? Not at all. So then you know it's got to be something else. Mm -hmm. I know disrespect to my L.A. niggas. I don't know who we're going to put up against Kendrick and, 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 Raz, and Raz and all certain niggas. But goddamn, nigga, 500 millionaires to Dago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't understand the game. So I, got, I say that story to come all the way around. Like, say you got 10 homies that's with you and y'all chasing this dream and they supporting you. Let's go, Mitch. Let's go, Mitch. And then you get one nigga in the hood that's funny style or a hater or that gossip or say shit. I start fucking with Mac 10. I actually signed with Mac 10, homie. Like in about, what was that, 2000, um, probably like nine or something like that. I signed with Mac 10. And um, shit happened. That's mm -hmm. my nigga. I love Mac 10. Shit happened to where the deal didn't really materialize and then Mac had some personal issues going on and he just dropped off for a minute even fucking with music. Right when I signed with him. Mm. You feel me? I don't know where this shit came from, but somebody told the homies... Mac 10 gave me $500,000, a half a million dollars. Okay, now check this out. Imagine you with your niggas, y'all grinding it out, last six, seven years, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then you, you sign a deal with Mac 10, and then the rumor get around that he gave you half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And the same homies that you've been saying, we almost there, we're gonna get it cracking. They, they ain't gonna ask you, but they looking at you like, Mm. Damn, did Slick get this half a million? Mm -hmm. Now niggas looking at you like you funny style. This nigga got a half a million dollars and ain't did what everything we said we was going to do? And so when a nigga don't really know what's going on or don't really know the business and he don't really know how to figure that question out right mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. that shit will start shit, homie. And even if it don't start shit, you'll lose support. For sure. Is that what happened to you? Fuck yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Niggas lied about all types of shit, but it ain't just happened to me, homie. This just Dago, homie. I don't take it personal, homie. It's mm -hmm. just Dago. It's how we are. Mm -hmm. San Diego cats, we, we really, like I said, we fighting over a small piece of pie, homie. And everybody is trying to slap the next nigga hand to keep him from getting it. Mm -hmm. But they really don't understand that no on no street shit, it's not going to be one person that get popping on me. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a movement. And if you look, ain't nobody else did it nowhere like that to where just one nigga got on and that was it. It's always a movement. And you got to have a sound to go along with that. You've seen Detroit do it. Started in New York. You've seen Atlanta do it. New York shit sound like New York shit. Atlanta shit sound like Atlanta shit. You've seen the Bay do it. You've seen Houston do it. Texas. It's no place where just one nigga got cracking. And, and one nigga might have got cracking, but they city, is, it, it, it ain't. Right, right. Like, say, for instance, St. Louis. I'm pretty sure this nigga's popping from St. Louis right now, but that's right now. After Nelly, my nigga, but that was 15 years. Mm -hmm. So it got to be somebody else in the town. You mm -hmm. got to have a nigga from your town to do songs with so y'all can share fan bases and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But the niggas in San Diego don't understand that. I ain't saying kumbaya, everybody come together, everybody whatever, but I'm, I'm at least saying like, once one nigga get popping, his homies at least got to support him. You know what I'm saying? Long enough till he get to the bag. Mm -hmm. And niggas in San Diego think the bag is there before it's really there. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Niggas see you on TV and think you got the bag. Nah, nigga. That first deal, nigga don't even have shit. That mm -hmm. first one, mm -hmm. you gotta make that. Even if you get a deal, shit, all that you got the bullshit deal. The first deal, bullshit. Mm -hmm. The renegotiation deal is the one where you might see a little change. Mm -hmm. Nigga, homies be done turned on him. Nigga after the first single, mm -hmm. you feel me? Mm -hmm. Why he ain't did this? If I had a, if I had a million dollars, I'd do this. 
Well, nigga, he don't got a million dollars. That's why he ain't did it. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. And that's the game, homie. Hey. That's Dago for you. Hey, man. Hey, man. And you mentioned uh, Rob Stone, and I've, yes. I've, I've seen you uh, in other interviews. You know, you know, always you've always shown love to like the younger the younger artists here in San Diego. They they don't really show not talking about Rob Stone, but they ain't never really showed it back the way they supposed to. I've the majority that. of them. I've noticed that. I didn't try to fuck with every young nigga in San Diego, damn near, homie. Okay. But it's crazy, homie. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Like, I don't know what this shit is with this new generation of cats to where they feel like, I don't know. It's like niggas don't want to have nothing to do with their G's. Mm -hmm. We loved our G's. We respected our G's. Mm -hmm. It's like now the young homies don't want to be around their G's. If you notice, like, if you notice any new artist that's out right now, when you see them, like when you used to see Pac and them, when you used to see Cube and them, when you would see, um, even game in them, mm -hmm. even game, even that far game, mm -hmm. you would see G's in the background. Mm -hmm. It would be G's there. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see the artists, it'd be a bunch of little niggas. Yeah. It's no G's in their crews. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why niggas be seeing each other and killing each other mm -hmm. up and shit. Mm -hmm. Cause it ain't nobody to have no ma ma mature, rational thinking about what's going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got phone. Yes, fuck them niggas. But niggas still want to get some money. So we're going to have to go over here to do this shit or something. These niggas be. Broad daylight, doing shit all mm -hmm, the, and fucking mm -hmm. up the bag. Yeah. If it was G's around, that type of shit wouldn't be happening. But mm -hmm. it's like the young homies don't want to be around their G's now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hear the excuses they use. They homies on dope and doing all this shit. Nigga, our big homies was on dope too, nigga. So I, I don't, I don't know what the fuck it is. I can't, I can't explain it. But I know one thing that You need your G's, homie, when you're doing this shit so that you don't have to go through war every time. You got to be able to have a nigga on your team that can make that phone call for you and say, hey, what's up? My nigga come into Philly. Hey, my nigga come into Arizona. Hey, my nigga come into Dallas. And when you get there, you ain't got to shoot a nigga or fight with niggas because your, you, the, your G's and already laid the foundation when you pull up in town. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of the shit that happened with the Rob Stone shit. That's my young nigga. Mm -hmm. But... He 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 went into this situation with a young crew, and when he and when them niggas try to push a line on him, you know what I'm saying? You know uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Triple X and them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Them niggas was pushing that pushing that line because you got to understand, Ski Mask. His nigga is Triple X. Rob Stone is on tour with Triple X and Ski Mask. If you ski mask, of course you're going to want to perform in front of your nigga. Your nigga, the big nigga, you want to perform in front of. But here they go putting this other nigga in between us. You know what I'm saying? They don't know this nigga. Mm -hmm. It ain't no G's around to do no politicking for him. Mm -hmm. So they try to push a line on the homie. And it end up going bad for them. But mm -hmm. then in turn, look at us. Now, the nigga that's, that's, that's the biggest nigga in rap damn near then got knocked out in San Diego now, the business people want to figure out, like, this is how it go, homie. So, you got your shit popping, and you trying to make some shit happen, but it's other people that do business with rappers. They're not going to fuck with you if they, if they, if they got action in doing um, business with the bigger artists. Mm -hmm. They don't want to seem like, they, they don't want to get pushed to the side, oh, he fuck with that nigga. Mm -hmm. No, so they're going to stand back off you and go where the bread is at. These, a lot of these people that can make your career blossom, they're not real motherfuckers, homie. Mm -hmm. They're not motherfuckers that's going to be down or going, no, they just trying to get on and they really groupies. Half the motherfuckers in the industry just groupies. Half the artists that's in the industry is groupies. That's how they get on. They ain't got no problem with running up, you know, saying, you know, jocking a nigga and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And you got a gangster nigga like me or a gangster nigga, you know, it ain't in our nature to do that type of shit. So we miss out on a lot of opportunities, mm -hmm. not calling a nigga three times. I'm not calling a nigga three times. <laughs> I'm going to call you once. I might call you twice after that. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably my problem. That's why I ain't, because I know all the niggas that want to fuck with me, them niggas blow my shit up. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But that's just how I am. Mm -hmm. No matter how big you is. Shout out to my big bro, E-40. E-40 on my last album. The song that I got with that nigga probably could have been the biggest song I ever had. But we couldn't get the video done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I called 42, three times, four times. 40 is a nigga I'm going to call a lot of extra times. You know what I'm saying? That's my nigga. Salute to mm -hmm. 40. Gave me game. Mentored me all the way through the thing. But just me being Mitchie Slick, I can't really call 40 like no 10 times and be like... Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. We, we get it done, homie. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to love you the same if you don't do the motherfucker. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Rap mm -hmm. don't define me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm Mitchie Slick without the rap shit. And so 
Whereas another artist might have got on his line and got the video done. Yeah, yeah. It's just how I am, homie. I don't know, homie. I but you. now I, I'm I'm with you on that. I I've struggled to find a balance with that too, because um, I've. I hear somebody that like when I, I was gonna say because you. I was about to, I, re, I reached out I reached out <laughs> mad time but like I said you one of the ones that was like when I first started this I'm like bro if I could get Mitch Norm and Paul Rudy man I, I know I'm doing something right you know what I'm saying so I was like when I reached out to you the first time I was pretty sure I would I, I might I may or may not get a reply but I was like I probably won't get a reply it's a busy man you probably don't know who I am but but to, but anyway to the point I was like I'm a I'm gonna shoot this shot you know what I'm saying until it go in and it, it, until until he tell me like bro like leave me alone or I'm a come do it. I'm going to keep that, shooting that shot. Really, truthfully, homie, me being Mitchie Slick, mm -hmm. in, in the way I need niggas to respect me in the industry, I can't really be that, that way because sense. I ain't, that ain't me. First, I'm Mitchie Slick. I'm not an artist first. But you. listen to the homie, y'all. This is how you get it done, my nigga. Don't be like Mitchie Slick on no bullshit like what I'm on. Mm -hmm. No, no, nigga. If you want to get something done, the people that I've seen that have been persistent, mm -hmm. I think like a Puff Daddy. I could just think he probably the... I've seen him move. He probably the most persistent motherfucker it was in his days of coming up. I don't know what he... Uh, uh, his trip now, yeah, whatever. Right, but I'm just right, saying, right, can yeah. you imagine how uh -huh. his personality mm -hmm. they couldn't tell that nigga no you feel mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. you know me so they say that i heard i seen a uh, rick ross interview he said Khaled is like that yeah, he, he said like that he said Khaled will pull up on your house like bro i need them vocals like later verse bro like straight up they said Khaled is like that and you see where he at exactly you exactly. see where he at mm -hmm. you, you know what it's, it's it's funny bro i had um after i interviewed norman powell at mm -hmm. lincoln and again shout out to norman powell for doing that bro that was that was dope um i told myself Mitch is the only person I'm, I'm gonna be doing that like because like Mitch is like he's the last but I I still I'm still like that but not as much as I used to be like I'll, I'll reach out and let and let someone know that I'd like to have them on the show and if we set it up and it don't happen I'll, I'll probably ask again one more time but after that I'm gonna be cool on it like I'm not really it's, it's certain people there's certain names and certain people that I'm always gonna be like nah I need that I gotta keep shooting that shot but it's 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 I'm wish I've it's been interesting trying to find a balance with that. And I and the way I look at it like I don't look at it like fuck up. I look at it like, okay, I got some more work to do. I gotta get my bars up so where what I call Fody, he'd be like, Slick, pull up. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But personally who I think I am now and who I think I am as a person and the shit that I've done in the streets and for my city, I don't think it's no nigga in the whole rap game that ain't supposed to answer my phone calls and move when I say move and shit like that. But you know, that's up that's up to San Diego and, and us to say, but we can't impose that on nobody else. Absolutely. They don't really know my who I am in this motherfucker, but I'm not just no rapper, and I know the type of niggas that people say and these artists say they rep, they respect, and that they show homage to, and I most definitely am that, though. I really did everything I'm supposed to do to earn my stripes as a nigga that you supposed to bust a move for when he call you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't recognize that, then I'm, I'm a, I get there. Mm -hmm. I get there. I it, it ain't going to end for me. I hear you. I'm gonna keep pushing. Mm -hmm. When did you? I know. I know. Like you know, Mitch is a part of your actual birth name. But when did you know? When did you become Mitchy Slick? Um, the Slick came from just getting away with certain little shit. It was a few incidents that I got away with. I ain't gonna talk about all of them. Mm -hmm. But the shit, you know, it was a couple incidents that took place, and niggas was like, "How the fuck that nigga get out of that one?" Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a big old fight. Up in Lincoln, mm -hmm. I, the Fodies, they had enrolled in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. All the little niggas. You said they, they enrolled? Been, they enrolled and came to Lincoln at summer school. The whole okay. Fodie Crips. Wow. Like all the niggas that was 15, 16, 17 came, and we had a big old rumble, and every nigga got kicked out of school except for me. And they was like, I, and I didn't do shit. I just went and sat in class after it was over. <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Everybody else is running and trying to leave and shit. Nigga, I just went and sat in class and they never came and got me shit. And it was a bunch of little incidents. They're like, how the fuck this nigga? We all got kicked out, nigga. Nigga, it ain't no foul play, nigga. I didn't, nigga. I didn't do nothing foul. I didn't talk to nobody, nothing. I just sat my eyes down in class and it just mm -hmm. worked out. But no, nah, it, it wasn't it wasn't me being slick on me. It was just me being thinking. I always had a model about certain shit I did. Mm -hmm. And if you, and it be, I don't hear it personally. But, you know, niggas be trying to question gangsterism and all this type of shit. Mitchie Slick ain't never been to no penitentiary. I've been to jail, you know what I'm saying? I done spent some nights in the county and all that shit. Mm -hmm. But 
but um, a lot of them inst inst situations where I could have went to jail or would have did time, like all the rest, I just wasn't doing a lot of shit. The homies, like I wasn't riding around in no stolen cars. A lot of niggas in my generation, that's how they went to jail the first mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Snatching purses and stealing cars. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't doing that shit. I just was doing me, you know what I'm saying? And I wasn't Is riding. it because you knew that would land you behind bars or that just wasn't your vibe? Um. Um. I never knew why niggas st stole cars, because all they would do is steal the cars and ride around in them. Now, when it was time to use it for other shit, I get that point, but that ain't when mm -hmm. the homies would go to jail. Niggas would be stealing cars and then just mm -hmm. to ride the bitches' houses in the cars and shit like that. I, I didn't think that was worth it, you mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then there, every nigga in my generation went to, went to jail snatching purses and stealing cars. Snatch your purses. I show, you know, that I, I wouldn't with that. I ain't, I ain't, I'm gonna try to do something else to get some bread. Not snatch your purses, but 13, 14 niggas snatching purses. Mm -hmm. That was a hustle mm -hmm. to little niggas when I was young. Snatch your purses, bro. Mm. You crazy. Yeah. So you, it was high school time is when you became Mitchy Slick? Oh. Yeah. Okay. 14, 13. Gotcha. I was Sean Mitchell before that. Mm hmm. They call you by your first and last name. Oh, okay. And then no, Mitch. Okay. And then Slick about 13, 14. Got you. It was just Slick at first or it was always Mitchy Mitch Slick? Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's a fly name, bro. I always wonder where where, it, where the Slick came from. That's a fly name, too. Mitchy Slick. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. But Mitchy, my last name Mitchell. Right, right. Slick. Mm -hmm. I was always a Slick nigga, man. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a smart nigga. Mm -hmm. Granny, Granny gave me that smart. Granny, my grandmother used to always tell me, "Be cool." Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the fuck with that meant. Be cool, mm -hmm. be cool. And as I got older, I realized she meant, "Don't be overreacting to shit. Mm -hmm. Think, be cool. Mm -hmm. You gonna always think better when you thinking cool and rational than when you making a a, a move off of anger or off of." You know what I'm saying? Like that. Absolutely. Yeah. You mm -hmm. say he was always a smart guy. Now you went to you went to Prairie View A and I did. Huh? Went to a HBCU. Talk to me about that. What was that experience like? Your, your time in college. To um, like I don't I I I, I don't mean to take nothing away from it, but it kind of like give a misconception of who I am to think that I went to a HBCU. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a thinker, and I, and I don't come from just, you know, my family was in the education and all that shit, but wasn't none of my homies going to no college, homie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that wasn't even in the plans for me, homie. Like, I wasn't even thinking of it. I mean, I always wanted to, but I never actually really thought I could be no real student, homie, like that. And um, it had got to where after I graduated from high school, man, I, was, I, was, I went to City College, homie, for a minute. And then I started getting into the streets, homie, my, more like getting money. Before that, we was in the streets, but we was just, you know, banging and shit. Mm -hmm. But I always went to class. I never was ditching school. I never was no disrespectful youngster or nothing like that. I just had this problem with all these other little wild niggas, and we would fight. That, mm -hmm. That's basically my banging, just not being a punk. Mm -hmm. And so... um I graduated from high school and I was like, damn, you know, mom used to have a nigga fresh and I got accustomed to having all the fly shit. And I was like, damn, man, okay. The niggas I'm in competition with ain't buying George no more. Niggas getting 17, 8, niggas buying low riders and putting Dayton's on shit. And I, and I had to do that shit, homie. And so I started splitting my time between going to school and hustling. And then it got to where I like, I just stopped going to school, homie. And mom's was like, okay, check it out, homie. You're not going to just not go to school and not have no job. And I said, fuck, my nigga Bubba had just passed away. My best homie died, homie, when I was like 19, and it kind of fucked me up. Mm -hmm. All the homies had went to jail try, behind this, trying to whatever. And I was in Dago, really just outside by myself, it felt like, for a minute, homie, against all these other niggas that was wanting to tear my head off. Couldn't go no job. Couldn't go sit up in no classroom and wait for one of these niggas to find out I went to the school and shit. Mm -hmm. And I said, fuck it, homie. I applied to some colleges, mm -hmm. homie, and got accepted to Pre Pre Prairie View A&M. And my whole family went to Prairie View, nigga. My mama went to Prairie View. My daddy went to Prairie View. My grandparents went to Prairie View. Oh, okay. My daddy's brothers and uncles, and, I mean, brothers went to Prairie View. My mama's brothers went to Prairie View. You know what I'm saying? And it was just part of it's something we do in my family. And, and 
kids after me and our family have went to Prairie View and graduated too. I went up there, homie, and um, I was doing good, bro. Being a student, I never thought I had could be. And um, but I also went down there with a hustler's mentality too. I figured, damn, it's down south. I could still get my hustle on down there. You know, the prices is up and shit. This is what I was on mm -hmm. as a young nigga. Mm -hmm. But in the process, I was going to school and learning the life and seeing what it was like to be in a different place. Best experience, I probably one of the best ones I ever did as far as culture and growing up. And um, I was the only San Diego nigga out there. And there was one other San Diego nigga out there, homie. And uh, me and that nigga was kind of moving around. I was, I was, now I'm khakis and chucks at an HBCU, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Out of place like a motherfucker, but I was loving it because, you know, I'm, I'm a fast learner. And I'm, I spent a lot of time by myself while I was out there. Not really clicking up because these niggas is fraternity niggas and mm -hmm. been doing shit. I see. But I'm out there doing my thing, out the way, going to school, getting my money. Mm -hmm. And, um, I figured, damn, nigga, Mike could graduate doing this shit, man. And um, I was used to having a lot more money at the time than my parents and family had knew that I was having at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of hurt me to be out there not really up. And nigga got, got, got to start getting to it out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sitting up in the dorm room one day. It's about 10 niggas in my room. You know, you got two rooms on the outside, bathroom in the middle, three niggas in each room. And... um. Niggas in the room smoking weed with the fan blowing out the window, PlayStation, competition. I don't even know half the niggas in the room. I'm not even playing that shit. And um, all during the week, it was some girl that had came up to Prairie View for the weekend at one of them big games, and she didn't come back home to Dallas. And the mamas and all them was up there looking for her and sending shit all over the school, talking about they looking for this girl that never came back to Dallas. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So, we in the room, everybody, you know, playing and smoking and shit. And every now and then, they send the dogs through all the dorms to check the dorms up in there. At, a, at Black College, they ain't playing, nigga. They like, mom, they like your mama up there. They ain't, you ain't finna be doing what the fuck you wanna do up here. The dogs is coming. I'm like, oh shit, the dogs is coming. About wow. two minutes later, boom, 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 they knocking at my motherfucking door. So they come in the room, they smell the weed. Everybody run out of my room and go to the other side of the room. I'm the only nigga sitting in there. You know what I'm saying? They find, you know, find weed in the room and shit. Fuck around, take me to jail, a couple other niggas to jail. You know, I'm over there papered up and shit. I bail everybody out and shit. It was right there. They, 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 I got out. I got to come take my finals and shit. But it was tricky. It was tricky, like, far as me going back to the school and shit after that. What had happened was a little girl was up on campus. And a nigga that was staying right across from me was messing with the bitch. But she had ended up staying with this other nigga over here. When they went to his room, he hid her in the closet. And since he heard he was messing with the other nigga, she was messing with the other nigga, he, t he said, I don't know where she is. She in room two. Woo -de -woo. The room, he holler out. He got the room wrong, he tell him my room, and that's how they came to my room. And that's how my that's how my college HBCU uh story ends right there. That and the nigga was crazy. having grades and doing good and everything. That's crazy. Yeah. I never would have thought that was a story that was coming. That's wild. Hey, look, she's in the dorm, he hide her in the closet, because the closet is private property. Mm. So if you lock it up, they can't fuck with the closet. She mm. hiding up in the goddamn locker, homie. They, 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 he sent him to our side of the room just to get him away from us so he can get her out. Send him to my room, nigga. I get out of jail, we go to that nigga room, fire that nigga up. Anyway, nigga, that was it. I'm right back in the set, homie, about two weeks later, and it's super active. Mm. It's super active, homie. We just get right back to the same shit I was on before I left that motherfucker. No thoughts or plans to like maybe see about another school? It was like, what well, college is over? Um, I think when I tried to apply to other schools, because of that, they wouldn't fuck with me. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. This nigga got weed on the campus. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Or some shit you wasn't even doing, because you said you wasn't even in there with them. Like I was getting my grades. I was just trying to have me some extra money so my mom and them wouldn't be having to... You know, even mm -hmm. though they was, you know, they wasn't tripping. My mm -hmm. mom would be mad as fuck because she would have did whatever she had to make sure I was straight. Mm -hmm. But I had already, I was already on dating, low riding before I went to college. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. 
I couldn't be telling moms, give me send me some thousands, you feel right. me? So I can go shopping and fucking off and shit. Yeah. But I was already I wish that's why I said, I mean, when you young, you don't know what the fuck you doing. I could have got me a fucking degree, just rolled it out for three, four years and just been the fuck up out of there and been straight. But mm. you know. Crazy, crazy time. That I regret. That's one okay. of my stories I regret. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Now getting getting back into music a little bit. Um, if you if you had to okay, so let's imagine the scenario. You're starting a you're starting a record label here in San mm-hmm. Diego. And you gotta go grab five artists to start the label. Mm-hmm. What five artists from San Diego would you go and grab right now? Hmm. If you need to, we can bump it down to three if you need to. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same shit the labels do. I'm gonna get on YouTube and get on fucking Spotify and see who got the biggest numbers. Nigga, that's I'm a businessman. Gotcha. Shit. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I heard that. You know what I mean? Now 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 who do I who my little niggas, my little team. I think some of my little niggas is Eddie Mac, Ocean, Skywalker. I think them is some of the most dopest MCs out of day go, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if we going by numbers, because that's all the labels care about, True. and that's what I do right now. I I, I, I I sign artists. I get artist deals and all that type of shit. Mm-hmm. They want to see numbers, homie. They don't care about talent no more. Mm-hmm. That's what the young homies got to understand. You come home talking about, I got this song and that song and all that shit. The labels don't really give a fuck about how good you rap or whatever. They just care if you're popular and can you get people to buy into your shit. A lot of times nowadays, you don't even get on because of your music. You get on for something else you do, and then they get onto your music. Mm-hmm. He fucked with this girl. He did this viral shit. Him and what's the name is beefing. Then they go listen to your music. So it ain't about talent mm-hmm. no more. I mean, it might get back to that because the game is fucked up based off of niggas just going strictly off numbers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got motherfuckers that wasn't even rappers that's number one artists now. They was just mm-hmm. beating up bitches on a reality show or some shit mm-hmm. or 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 you know, whatever it may be, the murderer, and now he a rapper and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you know, like, damn near all the rappers that's popping got some murder shit they done beef, mm-hmm. beat or some shit, all of them. Mm-hmm. Like, starting with Snoop, ASAP Rocky, Gucci Man, uh, motherfucking uh, um, uh, Draco. Uh, for, it goes on, nigga, we, uh, fucking uh, French Montana. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 um. You can go on, the baby. Uh, come on, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's more gangster than actually people know you murdered a nigga? Mm-hmm. When it comes to these fans, that's right, right. outside, that's fascinated by the shit. Mm-hmm. It's not reality to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they think it's entertaining that a nigga killed the nigga and he talking shit, acting stupid and shit like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know. Melly, what's his name? Y N N. What's his name? Melly. Y N is that Y N W Melly or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. All the niggas got murder raps, homie. I, mean, I never thought about it like that. Come on, what about what's his name? All the all the Chicago niggas, all oh, that yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, young boy, don't Young boy got something too? I, thought, I believe so. Come on, man. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. the shit I think about daily though. Hmm. I'd really do the math on this rap shit. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's uh? Well, you said you're you know you're going to like find artists and provide opportunities for 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 others. Is that 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 that's kind of your focus right now. And and every every rapper that that got some numbers going, I tried to do business with them, all of them. Okay, come up from the town. Yeah. Okay. Every artist, every single one of them that got numbers, I, I, it's fifteen of them. Mm-hmm. I didn't try to do something with. Damn near every last one of them. But like I said, that thing kick in. Mm-hmm. That San Diego shit with us not knowing the business. Mm-hmm. So instead of a nigga looking up what I got going on and seeing what I got going or finding out what I'm talking about is solid, and them not knowing the business, San Diego niggas, they won't open up the book or do their research. They'll just turn their nose up to it. That's or they'll have a nigga on the side of them tell them I don't fuck with Mitch for this reason or that reason or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. But they think they hating on me. Nigga, they ain't hating on me, they hating on you. They don't wanna see you get popping. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why they telling you all that shit, but they don't really understand. Mm-hmm. I tried, but I, I'm pretty much, I got over that shit on it, you know what I mean? I feel that. Little homies, I mean, salute to y'all, more power to y'all, but I'm not resentful or nothing. But uh, the, the, the little homies, they would rather, and it ain't no different, it's the San Diego syndrome, I call it. We don't believe in San Diego. San Diego don't even believe in San Diego. 
these niggas would rather do the same shit that I was trying to get them to do with another nigga from LA, or an executive nigga from LA. Mm -hmm. Bro, let me tell you, I didn't even, I didn't even, I done tried to do deal, deals with little San Diego niggas and they didn't do it with me. And I just go tell my LA nigga that only learned the game from me, hey look, go fuck with this. And then they'll go do the deal with him. It's happened, on my mama, it's happened. A San Diego nigga wouldn't do the deal with me. The same deal I was trying to do with him, I told another nigga how to do it. He went and hollered at the nigga and made the deal happen and, and whatever, whatever. You feel me? Now, of course, I'm going to get mine on the back end or whatever. Right, right. But I, I, and I can't even be mad at him mm -hmm. because San Diego niggas don't really know the industry. So all they got to go by is, well, damn, what do they know? Well, I know this rapper and I know he said he fucked with him or I know this, this money and he put up in this and bought and gave this nigga this money or make, they only understand money. They only understand cash in hand. They don't understand the value of all the other shit that come along mm -hmm. with what you could be bringing to the table. I ain't mad at my young niggas. I just want them to get their mind up so that we can quit getting looked down upon by the rest of these cities and shit like that. We're mm -hmm. not never going to be the shit until we start acting like we the shit. We don't act like we the shit. We let everybody else come in our town and we treat them like they the shit over us. Mm -hmm. It's niggas that don't do shows nowhere else. It be the first half of their career, they don't do shows nowhere else. You see the nigga on Halloween, on Christmas, on New Year. Wait a minute, if the nigga doing a show in Dago on Christmas, Halloween, whatever the fuck, whatever, what does that say? That means he's not getting booked nowhere else. Y'all mm -hmm. niggas that make a nigga special in San Diego, mm -hmm. by the time y'all done paid this nigga five, ten thousand, ten times, he is somebody now. He yeah. trucks and jewels and all the shit. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand. Y'all done made this nigga the shit. When y'all had another nigga right here in the town that was just as dope as this nigga, but the only difference between you and him is his city fucked with him, and y'all fucked with him, and y'all didn't fuck with y'all nigga, and they city don't fuck with us. Mm -hmm. You niggas will listen to all their music and go to their party and to where they club it. They're not playing none of our music. They're only playing their music. You go to the Bay right now, I love the Bay. Nigga, they're not playing no San Diego records in the Bay. Mm -hmm. You go to L.A. right now, they're not playing no San Diego records in L.A. Oh, you ain't playing my nigga. They're not playing your record like you're playing their records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. We don't have that pride in the city. We don't think we're that dope. Even if we are, we're just not going to let a San Diego nigga be special. The only way a nigga from San Diego going to be special is when he's looking like he's a superstar already. Mm -hmm. But everybody that y'all comparing this nigga to... Go look at their first shit. Go look at they. Go look at everybody's first. Go look at God, Yo Gotti when he first came out. Mm -hmm. Go look at Young Dolph when he first came out. Go look at Gucci when they first came out. In San Diego, they not gonna give you that. The nigga that get on is gonna be the nigga that's a superstar, and I don't know how you gonna get the superstar to <laughs> <Right. laughs> if if he don't if y'all don't fuck with him here. Right, right. But everybody else fuck with they shit. Mm -hmm. You go to Atlanta. You go in the club, you're going to hear Atlanta music. You go to Memphis, you go in the club, you go to Dallas. You're going to hear some other nigga shit, but 75% of the songs is going to be Dallas songs. Mm -hmm. Straight up. But in San Diego, it ain't like that. Mm -hmm. I used to blame the DJs. I got more knowledge. I can't blame the DJs. The DJs just trying to get a check. The club owners in San Diego would tell the DJs, don't play no San Diego music. Literally, you tell them that. That's a problem. Yeah. Straight up. Mm. Don't play that San Diego shit. Don't play that shit. I done had plenty of DJs tell me that. Then you say, what do we do? Well, the only thing we really can do is politically put ourselves in a better position. Mm. Be the club owners. Be the, you know, the and, and, bro, it's way better than it used to be. At least we got a few niggas that got clubs now or, or promote for clubs or do shit like that. It used to be none of that shit. I used to trip on, say, the DJ, the radio. Can't blame the radio fucking DJ. Radio is the most powerful shit. Niggas listen to radio more than that's just corporate shit. Big time. You are not finna good. Oh, they need to play our shit. Nigga, that nah, it's not a record that comes on the radio that's in real rotation that is not paid for. Nobody's getting no four, five, six spins a day on the radio and it's not paid for. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You might get your record off a couple of they'll play Imperial and shit like that when we got the records going and shit like that. But for rotation, that shit costs money. Mm -hmm. No song comes on the radio for free. Don't happen. Well, most people don't know that. Either. They don't know that. Mm -hmm. 
it's a good song. No, nigga, a song becomes a hit record by how much money you put into the record. Mm. Every now and then, every 10 years, you'll get an organic hit. Organic hit, meaning that it didn't take all the rest of that shit to make it a hit record. Mm. Uh, what you call it, got, uh, uh, you got like, like, like on the West Coast, Teach Me How to Dougie. That was an organic hit. Okay. And it even took bread after that to get it all the way going. Mm. But yeah, man, no, nah, man, that's that's too much. That's too much money made for you for that shit to just happen because you got a good song. You got the best song in the world. But marketing beat all that shit. Mm-hmm. Marketing beat marketing and popularity beats talent every time. So no disrespect to all my niggas that be coming home or be, be hollering at me about they got a dope rap or a dope song or the dope shit like that. Listen, man, none. I can't tell the labels that's gonna give. A, I can't give you the money. That's not how it goes. You can go fuck with. Goddamn Jay Z. Jay Z's not going into his pocket spending. He's gonna go get the company's money. The company don't give a fuck about how good you rap. All they care about is turning a dollar over. So if they see you got followers, then they'll invest in that. They don't. Have, that's why A and R's ain't what they used to be because A and R don't want to risk his fucking job. He put his money or tell the label to spend some money on a nigga that don't do well. Well, if he got numbers, at least he can say, well, shit, I thought he was going to do well. Look at his numbers. You might still keep your job. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You got to understand the game and how it works. Hey. Hey. Now, being a, um, being, being a legend from your city, what do you, I'm not, you know, I don't know if you Legend. I don't worry this. You absolutely are. Okay, okay. You absolutely are. Yeah, yeah, being a legend, you know me, man. Legendary <laughs> nigga, man. Oh, oh you, made, you, made, you made me rethink my question. Now. I was gonna Go say, ahead, what do you, uh, what do you think? Like, if someone were to set out, and I'm not saying you did, but if someone were to like to set out to become legendary from their area, from their section, what do you think like goes into becoming legendary in your area? You asking me? Yes. I'm the wrong nigga. Don't ask me, cause you are gonna have to be a legendary nigga in the street, straight up, respected, respected. I don't give a fuck about the rap shit and how good you can rap. You a legend. Niggas in your city, you gotta be an influencer in your city. You gotta be able to do shit that that can provide for your for for the people where you from. You can't just be a nigga that can rap good. You feel me? Mm-hmm. If you can if you can make shit happen in your community, I didn't mean musically. What you mean, legend period? Yes, yeah, just a legend from your area, or just becoming a legend period. You gotta for sure. You gotta do shit that niggas ain't done. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it gotta be stuff that niggas ain't gonna forget even after you gone. Mm-hmm. A lot of niggas be running around here thinking they doing good, but like, if you if you if you ain't here no more tomorrow, what do you have? What have you put your your hands on that people ain't gonna forget a month after you pass away mm. or a year after you die? Mm. And I hate to say die. I mean, I hate, no. After you're not, you're no longer here for whatever reason that may be. Mm. If you don't got nothing that's gonna be around and that's gonna be influential after you're gone, you know what I'm saying? In music. In music, if you ain't got a song that's five years old and they still be playing it, that shit like that, you. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I don't, I don't know who got, who got, who, who, who got a hit, who got hit records in Dago. When I say a hit, I mean a record that every time you go somewhere, they play that record and people dance and sing to that record. You know what? Come on, man! Everybody, the rappers is doing so good in Dago right now. Who got a hit record? It ain't you can't think of no hit record. Come on, Mike. I know you can think of one. I know some that I like, but no, you no, no. I'm talking about. We know the one. Don't even talk about it's one. Yeah, yeah. Forget put Imperial out the way. Okay, okay, okay. Because any Dago function you go to, any DJ that come to town, mm-hmm. any out of town nigga get on the stage at the biggest whatever they gonna spend Imperial. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying I assumed you were talking outside of that. Outside of that. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't think of one. Am I tripping? No. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I was like, my. Mm. I didn't say that record wasn't great. I didn't say that record wasn't better than this record or that record. I just said a record that if you're in a San Diego function, like say for instance, if you're in LA right now, and it's an LA function, name me three songs you might hear. About here. Uh... You gonna hear it last time that I checked more than likely by Nip. You gonna hear Gin and Juice maybe yeah, if it's the old Gin and Juice. Can, I was trying to think like some more. You can think you, you can think you can you might hear uh Roddy Rich and Nip. 
Mm-hmm. You feel me? You What's right. that? Yeah, Trapped right. in the middle. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might hear. I'm saying though, what San Diego I'm record? And I about. want it to be. I want that to be the case. Mm-hmm. But niggas gotta understand, homie. You got. That's what make you. You gotta have a hit record. Mm-hmm. And the hit record is a record that niggas play every time you go somewhere in Dago. You know what I mean? And I didn't say it gotta last forever. Mm-hmm. It's just records right now in LA that everywhere you go, you're gonna hear the record. If you go to the Bay right now, everywhere you go, you're gonna hear the record. Mm-hmm. Is that the artist's fault? I think the other day you said the industry. That's that fault. Because mm-hmm. this niggas that make records good enough for that. But we just don't love our music enough like that. We don't love it enough. We don't love none of our shit. What we love in San Diego is athletes. Mm-hmm. We love athletes. Mm-hmm. We let athletes do whatever they want to do. It's. I was going to say creative, but obviously music falls into that. I feel like it's slowly coming together. I feel like, because I've, I've seen, even even for me, it's like being like a cameraman and a content creator. When I first got mm-hmm. going, it seemed like a lot of the, the other cameramen and content creators didn't really want to rock together. And that that that's slowly changing and has changed for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, and just outside of that, I'm seeing like more, not, and not necessarily in a big way, but you're starting to see more people work together. So I feel like it is slowly starting to change. Not really fast enough for, for you know, that I would like to see, but I feel like it is slowly starting to change. You know what I'm starting to see? I'm starting to see that it, maybe like three or four years ago, it was a real strong push of artists leading the way and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. But I haven't, the progression of them, I haven't seen it really go boom all the way. I, I would agree with that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? The support factor that you've been speaking of? Mm. I, I think because um, you got to learn how to be as big as you are in Dago and other places. You got to be able to move and have and feel the same way and have your chest out the same way in San Diego when you go to the Bay or when you go to L.A. or when you go to Vegas. And... Um, I don't know if the San Diego artists have learned how to do that yet. I don't know if they've learned how to go to LA and not feel like they gotta play the back seat to the LA niggas. And I know I keep saying LA, but that's the biggest shit. Right, right. The Bay. Mm-hmm. Who from San Diego is gonna go to the Bay and stand out in the Bay and stand out in Vegas and stand out in Arizona and stand out in LA? That's what it's gonna take. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know if San Diego cats got the real real understanding of how special they really are, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And how you gotta act when you get there. Quit acting like you, you secondary. Quit acting like they better than us. As long as you act like that, and then they might not but how we act like that? Like, bruh, you cannot go to Chicago, you cannot go to the Bay, you cannot go to LA, you cannot go to Detroit. As an artist that ain't from there, to them places, go there, get money, do shows, sell verses, Fuck bitches, get weed, and then just bounce without doing nothing for nobody in the city. But San Diego niggas will let niggas do that. That don't mean go strong arm a nigga and go do something. Nah, you might just got to put yourself in a position to politic that the right way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't go treat niggas from out of town more at home than you do the niggas that's actually from Dago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I done been in the club in San Diego with artists that, you know, and I be with the artists that be with me, and these motherfuckers are by, man, check this out, man, I was in a club, homie, downtown, whatever new club that is, homie, what, what, what was the last one, homie? I, I, it's the owl now, with me, Matt. I go to me, I take Freddie Gibbs down there, uh-huh. that nigga come because of me, he don't know none of this shit, I take this nigga like they first week open. We go up in the club. They take first off. They take a minute for us to get into you know about to 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 get in the fucking um, VIP. Then these motherfuckers bring a big ass sign. Welcome Freddie Gibbs with the bottles and shit. The sparkles Freddie Gibbs and me and this nigga in there. I like damn. These niggas really did that. Wow. Mitchy Slick bring Freddie Gibbs to the club, and you niggas bring out some bottles and some sparklers and shit. 
for Freddie Gibbs. I don't got no shame. I don't cause I, I ain't no I tell what it is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like that that's not if that's not supposed to happen, man. Come on, that's bro. That's not supposed to happen though. Hey, look, look, look. That's disappointing to you. Hey, look. And so niggas be tripping on me like I'm whatever. No, nigga, I got a reason to feel I, mm. uh, uh, I don't got no shame, nigga. Another artist, I ain't gonna fuck it, I won't say no names. Cause one, another artist come to Dago, mm. same gangster type shit is slick. About three months ago, after a show that we supposed to have or something like that, they got a party over here and a party around the corner. I'm at, I'm at Phantom. The other artist is at the other club. Shit. The homies go to this shit. You feel me? Like, I, I didn't tell all the details to it, but I'm saying like I'm following you. They like this is San Diego, my nigga. Mm. And and I'm and and I'm thinking, like, damn, the homies is over there at this shit. Mm-hmm. You niggas is worried about bitches, having some fun, but y'all not understanding the politics right. that we need to have in order to make us all be able to get some money around this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. They not even, th- they not, I, I'm pretty sure they ain't, oh, fuck Mitch. No, that ain't where they mind is at. Mm-hmm. But you, even though y'all mind ain't on fuck Mitch, you niggas minds is not on no get money militant right, shit. Right, right. There's something that we need to be doing and we cannot be making this look look you niggas just worried about getting some hoes or some mm-hmm. shit like that that's cool but shit nigga we gotta handle this business nice. first in here. order to have respect for the city mm-hmm. if we don't respect the city ain't nobody else to come through this motherfucker gonna respect it homie straight up that's real that's real mm-hmm. that's real and uh, we gotta <laughs> we got work to do hey man. i could go on and on about that I'm type sure. of shit my I'm nigga. Sure. but see niggas always had their feelings about how i am well nigga how you think i feel mm-hmm. How you think I feel? You supposed to be the homie or you supposed to be whatever and you mad at me because I didn't do this for you because you thought I was in a situation that I never really was in. So how am I supposed to feel about you now? Nigga, you supposed to be the homie, nigga. You you quit fucking with me because of some money shit? Mm-hmm. That's not homie shit. Right. Nah, I, I, needed, I, needed, I needed the homies to really learn this industry shit because you can't just go get any nigga and put them on the team. I needed the homie to learn this industry shit, and I can't be mad at them for not learning it, cause they don't. They don't. If a nigga, San Diego niggas know how to gang bang, sell dope, pimp holes, and rob banks a little bit, and they know how to do this goddamn this uh scamming shit. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. far as like, like as many athletes as we got out here, which homie's an agent? We don't got no homie that's an agent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know how many niggas in San Diego probably been? They agent been an LA nigga. Why couldn't be no San Diego nigga? For real. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Everybody want to do that, whatever, but they won't think out the box. They do the primitive hustling shit. We gotta, we gotta pick our hustle up, man. We gotta. It's way better now, though. Don't get it fucked up. To my new generation niggas, y'all doing way better than my generation was doing by by thinking out the box, but. Yeah, man, we just been kind of primitive with our shit. We so gangster, man. We so mm-hmm. gangster in Dago. And I can't be mad at none of the homies for not picking up no books and learning how to do this music industry shit. But I can tell y'all it most definitely was needed. And and that and, and man, we could have had some of the millionaires, industry millionaires coming out of Dago because we, we, we've had the talent to do it. We just needed the, the, other, the other players. And that's why on your post I was talking about... Um, the industry shit. Mm-hmm. We don't have an industry. We don't I have very it. much appreciated that too. Yeah. We don't have a DJ. Mm-hmm. Like who's no disrespect to the DJs. But who's our DJ that's that can who kid? Uh 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 Young California. Uh it, it, like who's the DJ that can break a record? Who's the DJs that say, where's why we don't have a DJ coalition right here that comes together that's at all the clubs you know what I'm saying? They pick records to to to, to make crack in the clubs. Mm-hmm. DJs got to break records, man. If you're not breaking no records, I don't know what you, who the fuck, or what kind of DJ you are. I don't I don't know, homie. And then you can't be mad at a nigga not playing a record when a goddamn club owner told him not to play it, mm-hmm. or playing a record that's not popping really in the streets. And when he played it, it cleared the dance floor and shit like that. I mean, it's just it's a lot here, man. It's a lot, and I don't think I got all the answers to the shit. 
I just know that niggas don't really understand the whole industry of this rap shit. Mm -hmm. And for sure, until we start loving our shit more than we love everybody else's shit. Because if you go right now into any major urban, I mean, inner city high school and ask a little nigga in the Bay, who's his favorite five rappers? Bro, you think it's going to be... One of them five not being from fucking <laughs> the Bay is going to be rare as fuck. Mm -hmm. You ask a little Atlanta nigga who his favorite rapper is, you know, at least four of them niggas is going to be Atlanta niggas. Mm -hmm. Detroit niggas, they're going to be Detroit niggas. Mm -hmm. You ask a San Diego nigga who his top favorite rappers is. Man, I, I heard a little nigga get on the interview the other day from San Diego. I ain't saying no names. And they asked him, and the, the, the interviewer said, hey, check it out, man. Um, yeah, I ain't never interviewed nobody from San Diego before, man. You know, what is that about? It, you know, what, what what's going on with the rap scene? The motherfucker said, um... Yeah, man, it ain't really no rappers in San Diego, man. It was a few older, older rappers or something like that. But for the most part, yeah, ain't nobody never really. Motherfucker said this on the interview. He all the way in New York said this shit. I'm like, damn, what was that about? Was shame, that was that him. was that like? I mean, he literally didn't name nobody. With all due respect, I ain't you know what I'm saying. I don't, you know, but that that come on. He literally didn't come name on. nobody. I'm like, damn. See, and my thing is, is he malicious with that? Mm -hmm. Or is he just don't really know how that industry work? You not supposed to do that. Right. Because that fucks up your shit. Big time. Like, nigga, you gotta say what it is. You San Diego niggas gotta say what it is, homie. Like, say what it is. 100%. Like, you can't have a nigga in, a, in the Bay saying he came up off Mitchie Slick and then you be a San Diego nigga and do an interview and you say ain't no rappers never came from San Diego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're disgusting. I that think it's disgusting. Like, I don't that nigga wants to fight say. right now. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what to say, bro. Like, yeah, that, man. You, you, uh, I, mm. That's where we at, homie. I mean, I could talk about this shit for hours, bro. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, at the end of the day, homie, ain't nobody gonna crack out here by themselves mm -hmm. because you have to make a, a a a market for the shit. You have to make it. You have to make a scene, homie. Mm -hmm. You got to make it to where the niggas, where you from, want to hear your shit. And, you, and, and, and if your shit sound like somebody else, man, start with the producers, homie. Mm -hmm. We got to we gotta have a sound that's our sound. Mm -hmm. If a, there, There's a beat right now that you would hear and you say, that's a Detroit beat. Oh, that's a Bay beat. Oh, that's a, that's a New York drill beat. Oh, that's a Chi-Town Chi drill beat. Sh uh, Chicago drill beat. They have a sound. Mm -hmm. What's our sound? Well, I know what our sound is, but niggas don't want to fuck with the sound. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Our sound right now, hey, straight up, the original Dago sound, if you want to get a good example of that right now, the original sound. I ain't saying they got to stay like that or everybody got to rap like that, but just in case y'all are confused, the original San Diego sound, if you go listen to Damu, got a new record out right now called G Status. Okay. Him and the little homie um, EB, Eric Brim. In, in, in case y'all ever confused, that's the original Dago sound. Now, do I expect the new niggas to make songs just like that? No. But I at least expect them to understand and respect that's that's our sound. Whether y'all like it or not, that's our sound. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and everybody else in the other cities, they kind of like pay homage to their G's like that. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with it because it don't just, but it hurts us though. When we don't have no pride in our shit and when we don't say this is our shit and show homage to the niggas that put it down before us because niggas put it down before, you know what I'm saying, before who's ever here right now. 100%. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Got a lot of education for you today, Mitch. I, I expected that. I expected that. But yeah, I, I appreciate you. I got I got one last thing before I let you go. Mm -hmm. Call it my uh, my 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 quick hitter round or my oh, okay. quick hitter segment. I'm gonna uh, shoot one word or one phrase at you, and whatever mm -hmm. word or phrase comes to mind, you just shoot it right back to me. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it up. Let me see what I'm at here. All right. Yeah, I've been from the gang, gang, yeah. I'm from where the gang bang. Ask me again, and I'm gonna tell you the same. Yeah, Damu and them got one running that shit, gangsters. So, so I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, so yeah. Leave. 
It, it's just a conventional OG mm-hmm. shit. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing brand new, but it's it's that core shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna yeah. get tapped in for sure. All right, let's do it. First, San Diego. So whoa. Gang banging. Uh, we started pretty much at the same time. Like you said one word back, or whatever, whatever comes, whatever, whatever comes to mind. When I think of San Diego from a street perspective, I think of it's being comfortable for Damus throughout the years. Because when I went to other cities, I was I was made to feel very different. I was like my first days in L.A. Sheesh. Like I remember the first time I ever went to L.A. Nigga, I went to the fucking summer jam. Nigga, I ain't never seen five hundred crips together at one time <laughs> fuck me up I bet. fuck me up nigga the legendary one too the grapes in the 60s and all that that's when okay. they took over that guy it's legendary you can go look on the goddamn mm-hmm. youtube nigga they was mauling dom moves at this motherfucker homie and i had to witness this shit it was a straight culture shock for me but then yeah that you say gang banging mm-hmm. uh gang banging homie basically is the southern california street code it's like it's it's just what it is. It's not no way around it. Your, your grandma know to tell you not to wear that. Boy, don't wear that much blue walking to the store. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's a way of life. It's not nothing you choose mm-hmm. in Southern California. So it's the street code. That's the street code. We live by that. Everything is based off of that in Southern California. Fucking gang Okay, got you. Lincoln High School. Um, where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? My granny taught at Lincoln. You know what I'm saying? My aunties taught at Lincoln, you know what I'm saying? Graduated from Lincoln. I played at Lincoln, even when school wasn't in. Like, we want to play football, we go, we playing football on Lincoln High School football field on mm-hmm. the weekends and shit like that, when the gates was open and the field was raggedy and shit. Mm-hmm. It's everything. It, but it, right now, it's the heart of, of Southeast San Diego. 100%. Lincoln High School is the heart of 100%. Southeast San Diego. Because the youth is, youth is the shit and exactly. the most prominent shit we got going on for the youth in Southeast San Diego is Lincoln High School. 100%. I always, I always say, man, Southeast is the heartbeat of San Diego and Lincoln High School being what it is to the Southeast, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head with that one. Mm-hmm. I already did Lincoln. Uh, the Four Corners. Um, Man, the Four Corners, homie, I remember when they got the name. I was there when Four Corners got the name. The Killer Shell. It used to be Killer Shell. It used to be... Um, a, a Norman's liquor store, you know what I'm saying? Like this was the active grounds for everything, homie. Lincoln lunchtime, you know what I'm saying? This is just like, you know, this is just Triggeration Station, homie. Four Corners of Death is Triggeration Station. You can get a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. homie. We used to go up on Friday nights and hang out at the Four Corners of Death. It'd be like 200 niggas at 12, 11 o'clock at night. 100 niggas on each corner. Gambling game by, by what you call it? Gambling game by Valencia Park Market. And we little niggas kids just pulling up to four corners of death. And niggas was getting shot like a motherfucker back then. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like, and we've mentioned LA a lot in this interview, which is cool. Mm. But it sounds like the four corners is what Slauson was on Friday nights. C- Crenshaw. Crenshaw and Slauson. Yeah, but yeah, it's Crenshaw a little different. Right it's a little bit different. Because Crenshaw, you can get a little bit of everything on Crenshaw. Okay. But at this time, it was all young, bad actors. That's it. It mm-hmm. would be Crips, Bloods, different areas. Bloods mostly gambling and shit, but then I see what you're niggas coming through. It was it was nothing good about it. Crenshaw still got a little bit of good shit, too. It wasn't nothing good about the Four Corners of Death on me. Hey. Straight up. Hey. They I'm call like, it the, they try to call it the Four Corners of Life now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. Salute, salute. <laughs> But yeah, now that was that was that was that was where we learned a lot of shit up there, man. Hey, hey. My last one, Mitchy Slick. Mitchy Slick, man. I'm just I'm just I'm just somebody, homie. That um, man, I'm a product of my environment, homie. Because there's so many things that I know I could have done and been good at, but. Being from where I'm from in, in Southeast San Diego during them times, it wasn't really no way to be nothing else, bro. Not being the only child. A lot of times I hear like people I be around that ain't from the Southeast, they be like, well, what's the name was over there and he didn't do that. He wasn't living there. Yeah, but what's the name had a big brother that would have, you know, made sure he didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. 
and what's the name had whole family was whatever. So if somebody did something to him, they already knew their whole family. When you were only child, homie, and your family ain't really from San Diego, like, you know, like 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 mine was, you know what I mean? My family had just came to California maybe like a couple years before I was born. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just me, homie. I'm living on Logan Ave, homie, at nine, ten years old, walking to school with the homies, you know what I'm saying, in the morning. It, it was kind of tricky, homie, but at the same time, I still never just lost who my, who my mama and my pops raised me to be. And even at this time, I still care about niggas a lot more, I think, than they care about me, homie. I, I, feed, I, feed, the, I feed the families every Sunday, homie, in the dip on Logan and Euclid. I might can't feed a whole neighborhood, but I feed a good 30, 40, you know, people every Sunday for the last couple years and shit like that. So, um, every Christmas, man, me and my family, homie, and Hood Beast Motorcycle Club, and my aunt, um, 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 Pastor Carol, and we give out like hundreds of thousands of toys, homie, every Christmas, homie. I'm still a nigga, homie, that ain't just been all the way smothered by the negativity of Southeast San Diego. And I hate to make it seem like it's a terribly, terribly bad place because everybody be online talking about San Diego is this and this. Man, but San Diego ain't been that good to me, homie, like that, bro. Like, damn near all my homies is dead or in, in jail, got hella time in jail and, you know what I'm saying, niggas from, nigg even niggas in their own neighborhoods be be the reason they be dying and shit like that now in South East San Diego. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, I I, I, I I guess that murder rate in these other places in Chicago and the crime rate in D.C. And, and all these places is way higher, but, man, I, I, I feel like I just felt the worst in South East and, and being the artist and being a rapper because everything always comes t to you, you know what I'm saying, when you're in the middle of the shit, you know what I'm saying, and you're going to stay in the middle of the shit when you're the rapper because your name is always going to be in the middle of the shit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm older now, homie, so I, I don't let that shit control my life and I done figured out a way to wiggle around and shit like that, but mm -hmm. that shit don't never leave, homie. It's always a nigga plotting. Mm -hmm. It's always, no matter what. Nigga, oh, you're older? It's, no, no. He can still get if he ain't on his swivel. Mm -hmm. But I love my city, and I want to see us do well. And I appreciate young niggas like yourself that's doing brother. other shit that niggas in my generation wasn't doing. You know what I mean? And I hope for the best. I hope we can get it together. But I know for sure, though, niggas going to have to learn how to work together. Not kumbaya, whatever. No, like even businessmen. Like, there's not even a group of black businessmen that have come together and made stuff happen as a business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody's individual. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know, they got something popping, they individual. That's real. You know what I mean? That's real. But no other races do that shit. Mm -hmm. No. Everybody think I'm going to hustle till I get my hundred bands and invest it in the shit. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is like, well, shit, man. I got 10, and the other nine niggas got 10. Collective effort. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's how they're killing us. Mm -hmm. That's how we. That's why we in last place. That's why we damn near don't damn near don't got no black community no more like we used to. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Other races is coming in and buying up all our shit. Mm -hmm. They got different races, liquor stores. The, the, the liquor store owners aren't in our um, aren't, aren't owned by us. The grocery stores damn near ain't even. They are grocery stores. Um, 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 the landlords and the apartments in our communities mm -hmm. is no longer us. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not tripping on no race or nothing like that, but goddamn, like, we get moved right up out of our own hoods. Right. And that's because we rather fight with each other than come together or fight against another motherfucker. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Hopefully I could, you know, help be a part of that change though, man. You are, homie. You're Absolutely. doing something right now, homie. I see what you're doing for the youngsters. Appreciate I see you man. blasting them out, helping their careers get popping because the shit you be doing to highlight and showcase their skills. I, I first got on you, I think, with the mic um, behind Mikey. Some of the shit you okay. was doing with Mikey. That's why I met you, actually, right. the first time. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, but I was checking your shit out with him before that. Okay, bet. You know what I mean? Bet, bet, bet. Yeah, I was like, ooh, the homie got it popping. I appreciate that, bro. That's yeah. good to know. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Mitchie Slick, man. Like I told you when you first pulled up, this is a dream come true interview for me. What's up? It means a lot to me, man. For my career, for everything I've been doing, it means a lot to me, bro. So thank well, you. Let's chop it up and run it up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely, bro. That's absolutely. Love. Ain't Got It Yet podcast, episode 45. I appreciate y'all tapping in, man. Till next time. Take care.